We gaming? That's right, man. Always. Forever and always. Um, what class is this under? This one. Shit, man. Cat literally crying downstairs? Yep. One of the whales got beached, man. They called it quits. They can no longer afford to fund DSP's lifestyle. Very sad day. My weekend is kind of shitty, but I hope everyone else is having a good one. Sorry to hear that, man. What's the MW3 controversy? It's Modern Warfare 3, man. That is the controversy. Whenever there's a COD, it's always going to be controversial, apparently, now. mic do I have? I have the Shure SM7B. You're gonna have to spend about a thousand bucks to use it properly though. The mic is 400 bucks. To get a good boom arm you're looking at about 80 bucks. To get the cloud lifter you need to use with it you're looking at another 200. Then you need good cables so about another 40. And then you need something called the Go XLR which is like I think 400 bucks. So all in, man, you're looking at over $1,000 to use it properly. It's very expensive to use, but it does sound nice. It's kind of like the default mic that everybody uses now. Zher with the five playing AC Valhalla, enjoying it, especially killing the British. How's gaming and what were the videos? Uh, that is a good question. They were mainly just recommended. I don't think we watched anything I had planned because we ran out of time. But it was just mainly recommended videos. Something about what was it? We watched the fucking female Ben Shapiro. We watched. fucking remember in all honesty oh shit Uh, my thoughts on MW3 are that I'm buying it day one, man. I don't really need to hear much else. Let's see. Shit. Dude, why is my reload feeling so fucking slow on this gun? The regular M13 was really shitty, if I remember correctly. And this one's kind of living up to that as well.
Mine. Nice. Should I play Black Ops 1? Yeah, I would. It's got the best campaign in the franchise, in my opinion. But, yeah. I don't think that's a bad decision at all, man. It's Treyarch's best game, that's for sure. I don't think they've ever had a game anywhere near as good as Black Ops 1 again. That was kind of it, man. <clears throat> like, people like Black Ops 2 and 3, especially for zombies, which is fine. I don't like zombies, so I don't care. But campaign and multiplayer-wise, I think Black Ops 1 is like the pinnacle of Treyarch COD. Hands down. It also was the uh, game that David Vondahar wasn't in charge of, so take that as you will. Yeah, the Black Ops 2 campaign was dog shit. It was really fucking unbelievable in my opinion. It was just really stupid. Like, the whole thing didn't make any fucking sense. Like, this cartel boss was supposed to be like the fucking voice of the 99% or something. It was, like, so fucking retarded, man. Yeah, he left uh, Treyarch yesterday. So, GG. That's good news. He probably had a shit ton of Activision shares that he's going to be able to cash in when he leaves. So, that's going to happen with a lot of key talent at Activision because a lot of them probably have, like, uh you know, stock options from all their bonuses over the years from, like, you know, leading projects and shit like that. And now that Microsoft is buying out Activision, it's very appealing for them to just leave and take the $95 a share and probably retire. Dude, the concert at the end of Black Ops 2 was fucking stupid. <laughs> that shit was retarded as fuck. I forgot about that. With, like, whatever that fucking band was. Five Finger Death Punch or something really cringe like that. I forgot what the name was. It was like, bro, what the fuck is this shit? It was, like, the edgiest fucking, like, band name, too. It was, like, I think it was, like, Five Finger Death Punch or something cringe like that. I don't fucking remember. But one of my friends was, like, a big fan of that type of music, so he was like, Bro, they put this song at the end that's so fucking cool. And I was like, bruh. I wouldn't say that much, but hey. To each their own. Why is it that, like, every single metal band has to have, like, the most fucking overly edgy and cringe name imaginable to show, like, how fucking hardcore they are, bro? It's like you're a bunch of fucking dweebs that play the guitar, dude. Tough people don't play guitar. You're like a glorified band kid. Like, chill the fuck out. 
The type of guy you're afraid is gonna fuck you up is not the type of guy that goes to fucking guitar lessons on Saturday. Like, I don't know, dude. That shit's always made me laugh. Griffin's girlfriend's middle name is Faith. Uh, you must have a lot of faith in me that I actually have a girlfriend, bro. Because I don't. Yep, they complain about their parents or how their girlfriend left them or how they're never good enough or how their life is meaningless or how they're in pain, they're sad, they're lonely. It's like incel bait, bro. It's bottom of the barrel bait, I guess is a good way to put it. You know, if you're just a complete fucking loser. Did you see MW2 changed its name to just Call of... Yeah, because all Call of Duty games are just going to launch from that. So basically, it's basically going to be a hub app, and all of the games and different like modes from those games are going to be accessible from the main menu, which is kind of cool, honestly. I like that. I think that's smart. It's called Call of Duty HQ, which is what it's been called this entire time. If you look at the actual, like, EXE file running on your computer. But, uh, yeah. Kind of interesting. Yeah, I thank God every day that I never had an emo phase, bro. <laughs> Real talk. New generation still in his emo phase, Brit. He still hates his parents and wishes he was never born. If I was never born, I wouldn't have to feel this pain. I don't think most people have an emo phase, unless they're just really fucking, like, unnecessarily trying to be edgy. There was very few people I knew growing up that had an emo phase, so, like, barely anyone in any of my, like, classes in school had an emo phase, thankfully. Some Starfield reviewers are leaking their impressions of the game so far. They're saying it's very good and bug-free. No, they aren't. You are legally obligated to not talk about your review until the embargo date, bro. 
Stop smoking that fucking snake oil bullshit. It's not worth it. You are listening to impression farmers on Twitter that do nothing but farm impressions spreading a bunch of misinformation. You're taking the bait. Until that embargo hits, you have no fucking idea what those reviewers are saying. Because if you leak shit as a reviewer, you can be sued and charged with corporate espionage. You have to sign an NDA document. So if you are publicly sharing your impressions of Starfield before the agreed upon date, you can be criminally and civilly liable for breaking your contract. You are full of shit if you really believe that these people are leaking their reviews. The only thing you are allowed to say when you sign those NDAs is, I am reviewing Starfield and playing it right now. And if you really believe that a Bethesda game is launching bug-free, you already know that shit's cap. So, sit down, my guy. Go huff that fucking hopium all you want, but, you know, let me just go ahead and give you my leaked review for, uh, what's a game that's coming out? Uh, Spider-Man 2. Let me give you my leaked review for, uh, Fortnite number three. Go. Um, League of Legends 2. CSGO 3. Um, what else is a popular upcoming game? Oh, Black Ops 17. Yeah, that's another one. Like, it's just... You're gullible if you actually believe that shit, my guy. So, Oski Wasi with the two for you. Let me check in a second. And Z Herb with the two closest they get to Black Ops 1 is World at War. I didn't like World at War multiplayer that much, bro, in all honesty. I thought World at War multiplayer was pretty weak. It just felt like a like literal reskin of COD 4, just with shittier guns and kill streaks. I don't know. World of War didn't hit for me. I never got into it. World of War, like, I don't know. It just felt like a step back from Modern Warfare. I saw there with the five. Check it out, man. In each generation with the five, a XLTT employee said her job was so hard making tweets and TikToks. Oh my God. The stress. Poor thing. And said she didn't know a employee handbook isn't an NDA. Yeah, they really hired the best and brightest for, you know, TikTok creation, I guess. Dear fucking Lord, man. Everybody's a fucking victim these days. It's really sad. Oh, God. This shit. The Barbie soundtrack, really? Bruh. Bruh. There's not... Wait, they're not sending their best and brightest? Dude, like, all these dipshits that hire these fucking Zoomer chicks with colorful rainbow hair, you know, they're really just asking for this type of shit to happen. If somebody walked into my office and asked me for a job and they had fucking rainbow hair, they'd be out the fucking door with no job to show for it. I would never hire one of those bitches.
I mean, not only is it super unprofessional, but I don't want a mentally unstable individual working at my company. They could be like a shelf stalker or something like that. But they would never have a place of importance. Dude, how can a bitch with fucking neon pink hair be hot? Just stop. They're not mentally right. That's like saying, dude, that chick with Down syndrome is low-key fire. There's something wrong with them, bro. They're damaged goods. Bro, if Starfield isn't hype as fuck, I've lost all hope for Xbox. Well, I mean, it's not really an Xbox game. That's why I've always kind of laughed at the fact that, you know, Xbox hype it up so much. Because it's like, bro, this game would have been a thing with or without Microsoft buying them, so... And this whole narrative that Microsoft was hands-off with Redfall is completely fucking false. Because Arcane literally begged Microsoft to fucking cancel the game, and then Microsoft was like, No, you're still gonna develop Redfall. We want the game to come out still. So, that's what's kind of ironic, is they've been lying about their involvement with studios for a very long time, so... I don't believe it for a fucking second. Only clowns have rainbow hair? That's right, Brett. Hong Kong. If the next Call of Duty isn't hype, I've lost all hope for Kill Spender. Well, it will be hype, because it's literally just this game with nice improvements. So, pretty straightforward in my opinion. I'd like to think that Microsoft helped with some funding and supported them during the delay. I doubt it. Bethesda didn't need help funding Starfield, man. Elder Scrolls Skyrim still prints them money. Fallout 4 still prints them money. The fucking budget for this game was perfectly fine. They didn't need a fucking penny. They just sold for a good price. And, I mean, let's say, like, Microsoft's money somehow does equate to, like, quality. What the fuck happened with Halo? That had the biggest budget of any Microsoft game ever, and it was a complete fucking train wreck. So, I don't even think, you know, Microsoft's money translates into quality at this point. Nick, I guess you're never getting married, bro. Hate to break it to you, but 90% of white women listen to Taylor Swift, so, if not more. So if you have your heart set on marrying, you know, any sort of white chick ever to be born from the age 35 and under, she's probably listened to Taylor Swift. Timothy Marco with a five. The console warriors on X are arguing because Starfield start screen looks too... Really? Oh, my God. Dude, I'm like... Every day I'm glad I'm not on fucking Twitter. Every single Bethesda game has a dog shit start screen. Like, look at Skyrim. Skyrim's start screen is literally a fucking logo and then four menu options. Like, there's nothing there. It's like basic shit always.
Did I hear Fresh and Fit got demonetized? They'll probably just go to Rumble, man. They got like that super political following, so they'll probably get like a Rumble deal or some shit. That would be my guess, if they don't already have one. Maximum of the two, I hate the M13. C. Ear rape, ear rape, ear rape, ear rape times five. Alright, so I'll do five sound effects. You're I'm just gonna say, say you fucking 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 Yeah, I don't really think anything of value is going to be lost from Fresh and Fit not being monetized, but my guess is they're going to be perfectly fine. They'll land a fucking Rumble deal or some shit like that. He will land a Rumble deal. Or they. I don't know who fucking owns the podcast, if it's multiple people or just one. But they'll probably get a fucking Rumble deal. Stop being fat phobic? Nope. Lose weight. Stop being fat and then I'll stop being fat phobic because then there will be nothing to be afraid of. There you go. Fat phobia is necessary, man. Everyone should be fat phobic, especially when it comes to themselves. Japan has a fat tax. Why can't we? Because food corporations pay our government way too fucking much in uh, campaign lobbying for that to ever happen. There's too much money in overeating. Also, the healthcare industry loves obesity as well. 
because then people spend more money on medical treatment because they're fucking fat. Also, clothing companies love it because they can charge more because, you know, they have to use more materials and make clothing more durable for the fat tubs of lard. And then they say, well, we can't discriminate based on size, so everyone has to pay more for their shirts if they use less material or not. So, no, everybody, like, in the corporate world loves fat fat people because, like, fat people on average are fucking dumb. It messes with your brain chemistry and inhibits your, like, critical thinking and problem solving and everything like that. So the dumber you are, typically the fatter you are. So if they want a bunch of dumb fucks who spend a shit ton of unnecessary money, then, you know, just make everybody fat. That's the fucking play, man. Have a bunch of fat, stupid dipshits that are, like, mentally depressed and just worthless. And just farm money off of them. Griffin, I'm scared. Brett showed up. You should be. Wait, does that mean Griffin is afraid of himself? I mean, Brett, technically... I mean, I don't know how tall you are, but being like 198 or whatever you are probably makes you fat. So, you scare me. Oski Waski with the two here. All right, I'll check it out in a second. I'm sorry, Brett. You're 197 now, or did you gain the weight back and now you're 200? Either way. God damn. Jesus fucking Christ. Tell me to my face to shut the fuck up. 200 ain't bad for a man, but it's not good either. Unless you're like 6'5 or something like that, then that's probably fine. The five went to Epcot today, strong eights and nines, but the girls dress sluttier at Universal. Well, dude, you want a nice, uh, wholesome chick, not the fucking village whore, so. Go for the ones that aren't dressed like total fucking hoes. Griffin, are you watching? Wait, am I going to watch the Women's World Cup final? No. It's between Spain and England. Wow. Two countries I hope I never have to visit. No, I will not be watching it.
Starfield story got leaked. Let's look it up. Starfield story leak. Where is it? You can do so here. You want me to spoil it? The aliens are just future humans. Crazy. They already said there's not fucking aliens in this game. That's not a spoiler. That's not a fucking spoiler, bro. How is that a spoiler? Bethesda has literally already said that there's no, like, human-like aliens in this game. That's not a spoiler. That's literally just a fucking plot point they already announced. Congratulations. That ain't even a spoiler, guys. That's a fucking, you know, cock tease right there. I thought it was actually gonna be like a real spoiler. That's just some fucking no shit moment. a real spoiler constellations home base gets blown up at the end i don't fucking care who's constellation is that like the space explorer group yeah who gives a damn dude starfield's marketing can't be sad when it doesn't fucking exist Yeah, the fact that they don't have actual aliens in Starfield is really sad. You know, fucking aliens in Mass Effect was a huge draw. I mean, obviously you can romance, you know, humans in Starfield, but it's like, that doesn't hit the same, man. Like, I'm playing a fucking space exploration game to bang aliens. I can bang humans in every other type of RPG. What the fuck is the point of that? I want to bang some fucking Asari-like chick or somebody like that, man. Not something I could get on planet Earth. Missed opportunity, in my opinion. Yeah, there's no aliens in Starfield, just like animals and stuff like that. They've already announced that a long fucking time ago. That's not news. Yeah, the only aliens are like fucking, you know, alien reindeer or some shit like that. I don't fucking know, man. Or alien squirrels or, you know, fucking chinchillas. Dude, I fucking hate that song, E.T. That song fucking sucks. I don't think Fable looks good. It just looks like another generic fucking, you know, realism simulator. I think they took away all the charm of the first two or three Halo... Or not Halo, fuck. Fable games, bruh. I can't fucking speak. I'm trying to play Shipment and Talk, guys. It's not a good mix.
But yeah, I don't know, dude. Like, Fable to me just looks bland. And I don't even know what the fuck the game's gonna play like either, so. That gameplay they showed off is literally just fucking cinematic, so. Katy Perry, I Kissed a Girl. Yeah, I hate that song, bro. I can't even relate to it. Like, what the fuck? Spider-Man to me is of zero interest personally. If Spider-Man got canceled tomorrow, I probably wouldn't even give a fuck. If it happened, I'd be like, oh no. Anyway. Batman Arkham Knight is way better than Spider Twink. Uh, yeah. 100%. Yeah, dude, the first Mary Jane mission is when I decided to stop playing the first Spider-Man game. I was like, yep, nope, I'm done. This is not fun. Like, I already wasn't having fun, and then they got me to do that mission, and I was like, yeah, no, we good. I'm selling this game and my PS4 Pro. Goodbye. And yeah, I traded both of the men for CSGO fucking crates. I literally went to GameStop, traded the men, and bought uh, Steam gift cards and bought a bunch of CSGO crates. That is how I spent the money, and that's how I got my butterfly knife. So, yeah. I would call that a fair trade. I never liked comic books as a kid. I never really got involved with anything superhero related or anything like that. Why is he called Spider-Man instead of Spider-Boy? Well, it'd be a little weird, Brett, if you had a uh, child boy shooting his white web at grown men. You know? Might be a little suggestive. 
U generation with a 10, react to. What is this? Forty-eight minutes, dog. What the fuck? Please tell me I can watch like certain sections and skip others. Like, holy shit, bro. Who cares? Is it just him bitching about gambling? CIA with the five. What if Phil Spencer canceled Elder Scrolls Six? Would you talk? Try. Oh, dude. Yeah, I'd probably sell my Xboxes. If they canceled Elder Scrolls Six, if they think I'm like critical of Microsoft now, I'd be like calling for fucking hellfire to be rained down upon Microsoft headquarters, bro. You don't fuck with my Elder Scrolls. I'm about to start a protest in LA over what? Timothy Marco the two, you'd put Melanie's Pride Church video to shame. Something like that, man. Battle Buddy Chatter Pack. The fuck? So it acts like a fucking Marvel movie whenever you get a kill? Cringe.
Ah, shit. Oh, baby, a triple. Yeah, the chat's just been fucked up for the past few weeks. YouTube did something on their end to just completely kill it. I don't know. Shit sauce. YouTube does do a little trolling, so maybe. Star should be the YouTube CEO. That'd be pretty base. All right, I got that done. on X removing the block feature you'll only be able to block people from DMs so from my understanding is the only thing them removing the block feature is gonna do is it's gonna allow them to still see your tweets but um you still won't see their content and I don't think they can post on yours but they can still see the shit you post that's what it seems like Because I think you have to allow for that functionality on social media. Like a block feature, I believe, is required by uh, the platforms or whatever. Have you noticed that the world isn't fucking ending since he uh, renamed it? Nobody fucking cared at the end of the day. You think DSP would do a great job as a consultant? Oh yeah, DSP is definitely a trusted set of hands to offer all sorts of advice. An NSA with a 10, timeout Brit for my Lord Jeff. We know how Jethro really wants to keep Brett quiet for five minutes, if you know what I mean.
Uh, boy walk, sir, with the 50 at you in chat. Message too long, lol. You know what else is too long? Seven inches? That's pretty big. And Timothy Marco, the two RTU went off on Elon for the name change. Yup. All these fucking dipshits were bitching about the name change on Twitter. Crazy. And you generation of the 10, mute NSA. Big ups, you generation. I respect a man who uh, defends his girl. Real talk. Michael with the two DSP rage quit Mortal Kombat already. Joystick it didn't help. Aww. Poor baby. You mean he wasted $500 for fucking nothing? How amazing. Who would have guessed? And he lost his fucking whale that pays him every time he plays Street Fighter too. So, yikes. Not looking good for our man Philip. Yeah, Philip Burnell did nothing wrong, man. Our boy, Philium. Fighting games rarely have betas on PC because I don't think anybody cares about PC when it comes to fighting games, which is actually pretty funny. Fighting games I don't think traditionally do very well on PC at all. They're mainly a console kind of genre, kind of like sports games. Gun's pretty decent, actually, now that I have my attachments. It's not too bad. It's not my favorite, but it's not horrible. Thoughts on Rainbow Six Siege? I hate it, personally. Not a fan. I played it when it first came out, really disliked it. I've watched gameplay of it. It does not look any better. Spawn flipped.
Ah, oh, shit. Damn, man. of the five can we watch this made in in january this year had fun making it plan on doing elden ring uh x succession opening what do you mean can we watch this what are we watching man what did you have in mind for us to watch So Griffin, are you and Nick Fuentes friends IRL? You too? You misspelled too. Have a lot in common, lol. I mean, Brit. That's like me asking, yo, Brit, you see that uh, bus full of Down Syndrome special ed students? Are y'all friends IRL? Because you got a lot in common. enjoy a good session of cum hunting like our uh, friend Nick Fuentes does. Why oh, Sally with the five? Let's see. Do you think Nick Fuentes is cute? Do you want him to be your little cum hunter? for Nick Fuentes, probably. That's probably pretty accurate.
Oscar Rodriguez of the five, I asked chat GTP how to get off the ground if you're homeless. It just virtue signaled me and gave me a generic, it's not appropriate. Oh my God. Should have told you to uh, stand up. I gotta get used to this new layout. You shut the fuck! Don't you fucking tell me to my face to shut the fuck up! go use the little boys room guys we need griffin dude if i could oh my god bro if i could become like an ai fucking content creator and just have like fucking ai make me videos and like fucking do live streams and all that type of shit I would do that in a fucking heartbeat. If I knew I could make just as much money, if not more, doing that, absolutely I would. Lol, that's the first someone described Griffin as little? That's right, Brit. There ain't nothing little about it. Gaming. This is a big ol' BB boy. Your words, not mine. Oh shit, I got lit up by the chopper gunner. Sucks like wet dick in a fucking Olive Garden parking lot. Fucking suck dicks in an Olive Garden bathroom. Please, touch some grass. Please do me a gigantic favor and take a long walk off a short dock. This is giving hand jobs in an Olive Garden parking lot. Bro, here comes a big hot load of PlayStation 5s. Oh man, it's so thick. Seven inches? That's pretty big. You shut the fuck! Don't you fucking tell me to my face to shut the fuck up! Respect trans kids. Affirm trans rights. Stand with Ukraine. Black Lives Matter. Trans visibility is valid. King Samuel with a two. Sup guys got three days in a row off. Nice, man. You shut the you fuck up! I'm just gonna say, say it. You don't talk shit about, about, about me with right your big ass fucking up upside down. Come on, you're all asking real fucking questions. Racist go bigots. Go and don't be a fucking pussy. Fuck your fucking because because you're a bigot and asshole life. too. Because fuck I'm you. angry and can't get pussy. So I have to do it to shut them the fuck up. Jesus fucking Christ. Fuck all of you. Shut the fuck up. You shut the fuck up. Don't you fucking tell me to my face to shut the fuck up.
I heard IOC is trans now. Who is IOC? see only iced coffee dsp's biggest fan so of course dsp is the proud ally now that makes sense that's why dsp is such a big supporter of the current thing that's his primary pay piggy all right i gotta go take a shit real quick guys i'll be in the chat jesus fucking christ shut up shut the fuck up you fucking virgin losers god damn go get a life go outside ha find meaning in your fucking life because they're angry and can't get pussy so i have to do it to shut them the fuck up jesus fucking christ fuck all of you shut the fuck up god damn it Either, either, either subscribe, donate, or get the fuck out.
All right, I'm back, guys. Did you miss me? Seems like everyone did. Griffin, tell Britt to sing Bloodstain. Britt won't even mic up to the bait, so I doubt that Britt's going to sing Bloodstained. Griffin, can you add Bloodstained into the either, soundboard? Either, either subscribe, donate, or get the mm, fuck out. I don't know. Uh, Shadow Monarch with the 30 months at tier 3. Really appreciate it, man. Almost messed up buying a graded 9 Elemental Hero Air Neos Ultimate Rare. I was about to buy it until I looked at why it was going so low. And it was a unlimited card and first edition cards are money. Yeah, I mean, if you don't really care about the one little stamp, it's not that big a deal. But yeah, the first edition cards are the ones people want to collect. Generally speaking. Holy frame rate, dude. What the fuck? Class is in session. I'm giving these people a back to school sale on bullets. Real talk. Good interview with Travis, by the way. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, I thought it went well, too. school sale at Best Buy is there. Bro, I still have that $250 Best Buy gift card I need to do something with. I should use it to buy new headphones because the left side of my headphones just straight up doesn't work now. But... Uh, 92 Vixter with the two missed my milestone. I got a 4060 Ti. Nice, bro. Hope you are uh, enjoying it. But I don't see a, uh, like the member milestone. I don't see one in my feed. The only one I see is Shadow Monarch, and that is it. I don't see any other ones. Get the headphones? Which headphones do you think I should get? I'm debating on getting A40s, A50s, or potentially. I heard the Sony H9s are really nice too. I heard the uh, Sony H9 headphones are really like comfortable as well. They're supposed to be like super lightweight, but also like really, I guess, premium. Kind of like Bose. So I don't know, I'm debating.
let's get 420 dislikes. Uh, no, let's hit the tips goal of $420.69. Remember, guys, when U Generation was offering to pay me to buy a new keyboard? Now he's telling me not to buy Astros. Like, come on, bro. He wanted me to downgrade my keyboard, and now he's telling me not to buy headsets. Like, alright, bro. AKA don't take his hardware advice. He doesn't know what he's talking about. The Hello Kitty headphones. They're perfectly suited for you, bro. What? You want us to have matching headphones, Brad? Oh, that's cute. Oh, I'm never buying Turtle Beaches, man. I owned one pair of Turtle Beaches and I absolutely fucking hated them. So yeah, I will never make that mistake again. Sony is no stranger to headphones, but the gaming headsets it makes tend to be specifically Dog, she's reviewing. All right. Like the Sony I'm watching a fucking Sony headset review and she's not even wearing the fucking headset in the review. Hold on. Let me show y'all this. This shit's fucking sad, bro. How did these journos get these fucking like jobs? I really wonder. Wait, hold on. Yes, I want to leave. Uh, hold on. Like, look at this shit. Watch. Sony is no stranger to headphones, but the gaming headset <laughs> She's not to be even wearing them. Specifically PlayStation branded, like the Sony Pulse 3D headset. Wait, and y'all see that too? Look at all the dust on that table, bro. She couldn't even take a fucking Swiffer before she put that shit on camera. Look at all the dust all over that shit. The gaming headsets it makes tend to be specifically PlayStation branded, like the Sony Pulse... 3D headset that came out in 2020, the tech giant's latest outing in the gaming headset market is a trio of products, the Inzone H3, H7, and H9. Today, I'm looking at the high-end H9, which features digital noise canceling in addition to wireless and Bluetooth connectivity. It's expensive and simplistic in design, but when compared to the Pulse 3D headset, this is a tough sell for most of its target audience. The Pulse headset fucking sucks. I have that behind me, actually. It's trash. It feels like literally styrofoam ear cups. The Sony Inzone H9 looks very similar to the Pulse 3D headset. Dog, what the fuck is up? Hold on, let me close out the COD. It's probably making Chrome freeze up for some reason. The menu of Call of Duty is like the most demanding part of the game and it makes no fucking sense. I signed over the five. I got the Platinum headset for PS5 and the Arctic Nova Pro. They work very well for me. What do you use? I don't use any headsets for the PS5, so this would mainly just be for PC with a white plastic outer shell and matte black headband. The design is simple and clean, and it fits right in with the other accessories in the PS5 lineup. The ear cups... Yeah, the H9s, they look a lot higher quality. Very great. Because Sony's headphones are actually very good. It's just their PlayStation branded ones are shitty. From the Pulse 3D. Instead For PC, what do I use? I have like a basic ass pair of like Razer Kraken headphones I've had for the past couple of years. 
of a round circular shape, the Enzone H9 is more of an oval. The side of the H9 uses forks to attach the ear cups, which gives them a bit more flexibility and makes the H9 a lot more comfortable to wear than the Pulse 3D headset. The Enzone H9 uses the same soft fit leather found on the Sony WH-1000XM5s, which gives the ear cups a soft foam-like feel that helps maintain comfort over extended Hold wear. On, I just want to see if the comments are like, reviews headphones doesn't wear them. Nope. It's also susceptible to scratching and tears after long-term use, and it's prone to picking up oils and smudges. Underneath the ear cups are several buttons to be found. On the right is the power button, the Bluetooth pairing button, and a game chat button that lets you adjust the levels of either. On the left is a USB-C port, a dedicated button to turn on or off ambient noise, and a wheel for volume control. The headphones use a USB dongle to connect wirelessly either to a PC or a PS5. The Enzone H9 also has built-in microphone, though I found it to be a bit underwhelming. Instead of the mic being something you detach or pull out of a little cubby you move around using a little rotary to pull it up or slide it down i don't also, care about the mic i will never use the mic it uses flip to mute system meaning the only way to mute the microphone is to flip it up away from your mouth it works fine Whoa. but personally i would have preferred a dedicated mute button the sony end zone h there is a dedicated mute button on your controller, right? Nine features active noise canceling, a welcome feature that was missing on the Pulse 3D headset. In testing, I found the noise cancellation feature was way better than the Razer Opus and was up to par with my AirPods Pro. The Enzone H9 has decent connectivity options, most notably with the ability to connect via both 2.4 gigahertz and Bluetooth simultaneously. This is a nice feature that's recently made its way to some high-end headsets, allowing you to play audio from both your console or PC and phone or another Bluetooth device at the same time. I found this to be oh shit bro hold on so i could have my phone playing into my headset while i'm watching shit on stream all right bro that's actually fucking nice i would use that feature all the fucking time I would use that pretty much every single day because my ADHD brain needs like four things going on at once, bro. That actually sounds really fucking nice, dude. Super convenient as it allowed me to be on a Discord call with my friends while also having the sound of a game from my PS5 or PC playing as well. When in use, the Bluetooth button does triple duty. Pressing the button once plays or pauses a song. Pressing the button twice skips the song. And pressing the button three times restarts it. On the left side of the ear cup, you'll find the USB-C port for charging, though it can't be used to establish a wired connection to another device. If you need to charge the headset while using it, you still have to use the USB dongle for connectivity. There also isn't a 3.5 audio jack like the Pulse 3D. Sony promises that Enzone H9 can deliver up to 32 hours of battery life. In my testing, I managed to get about 30 hours before I opted to plug it in for a charge. That's really good. Damn. That's actually really fucking good, dude. The Astros last like six hours, so... To test gaming performance, I booted Resident Evil 2 Remake, which takes full advantage of the PS5's Tempest 3D audio, allowing the H9 to immerse me even more in the game. The sense of dread wandering a dark, gloomy, zombie-infested police station was all the more intense thanks to the 3D audio letting me hear zombies moaning and shambling from all different locations. Games like Astro's Playroom and Horizon Forbidden West were no different. Roaming the world in both felt like a significant improvement compared to playing on a TV with no headset. The immersion that the PS5 as a console can do is impressive, and the H9 performed its job on that front admirably. While the H9 is more of a gaming headset, I was curious to see how it performed playing music. In Seven Nation Army, which has an incredible bass riff, the H9 Ugh, that song fucking sucks. I offered clear and full sound. The bass was not overpowering, and I could hear the other instruments without having to crank up my volume. That said, the H9 doesn't offer the same level of clear- Dude, like, I'm watching this fucking, uh, video on uh, YouTube, on my phone, that I have paused right now because I'm streaming. Like, literally, I could be listening to this video and that video at the same fucking time, and nobody would ever know. Like, bro, that shit would be fire.
30 as some of Sony's more dedicated headphones like the WH-1000 line, but it's not a terrible option if you're trying to get more mileage out of your headset. The microphone built into the Sony InZone H9, on the other hand, is not very impressive. It feels cheaply made, and quite frankly, it feels a little out of place compared to the rest of the headset. It's very sensitive, picking up all sounds around you, not just your voice, yet also extremely quiet from my testing. When performing those audio tests, I set the microphone levels to the highest they could be, yet the output from the mic was still muffled and quiet. Similarly, on a Slack or Discord call while using the headset, I was told that my audio output was quiet while speaking on a normal voice. I had to overcompensate by raising my voice in order to be heard, which is not ideal when you're trying to have a casual conversation with friends or family. The Sony InZone H9 has a companion app. Yeah, I don't have friends or family, so it doesn't matter the InZone Hub, which supports Windows and Mac devices. <laughs> InZone Hub focuses on three types of settings, sound, device, and app sync. The sound settings allow you to adjust noise canceling and ambient sound, or you can turn off both. Spatial sound can also be enabled in the app, though you will need to scan a QR code and use your smartphone to take pictures of your left and your right ear in order to set up personalization features. On the sound settings Ew. page, you can adjust the equalizer of your headphones. The EQ options aren't as robust. They want me to take ear pics? Says the SteelSeries Arctis Nova Pro, where things Things such as the mixer, game, chat levels can be fine-tuned, but there's still plenty of here to tinker with. Unfortunately, EQ adjustments you make in the Enzome hub only work with PC, so you can't use those settings on your PS5 or through your Bluetooth devices. Sony's Enzone H9 is a good first attempt at making a gaming headset that isn't affiliated with the PlayStation brand, though the design very much still fits with the PS5's clean white aesthetic. Its 3D audio works well, and noise cancellation is a welcome feature, even if it's not an impressive- Do you know what's not clean? That dust. ...as Sony's flagship ANC headphones solid battery life, as well as the ability to connect to multiple devices at once, also make this a headset worth considering. Unfortunately, all that good is overshadowed by okay performance when playing music, a disappointing mic that is hypersensitive to the smallest outside noise except for your voice, and a price that makes the H9 hard to recommend compared to- Oh, the price. Ooh. If I'm looking at a review for a headset, I don't fucking care what the price is. I wouldn't even be looking at a review for this if I couldn't afford it. Bro, I'm so sick of that shit. It pisses me off every single time I watch a fucking review and I hear someone cry about the price of something. It's like, dude, I don't give a shit. I'm here because I want to buy it. Potentially. Obviously, if I'm looking to buy it, I'm not fucking broke to the point where I can't afford that shit, bro. All right, let's see what this person says. Long-term review. If you're like me, you've been looking all around YouTube for the perfect- If you're like me, you've been looking all around YouTube for the perfect gaming headset for the PlayStation 5. And if you're watching this video, then I think you found it, guys. We're going to be looking today at the Sony Enzone H9 long-term review of my favorite headset I use for my PlayStation 5. Because, like my dick, bro, the term that I've used this is really fucking long. Big PS5 headset. What if I were to tell you, you should stop searching here. Hello everybody, my name is David with Side of Tech, and welcome to my long-term review of the InZone H9 headset. Let's check it out. Scouring through the internet, you can find so many PS5 headsets. The Arctis Pro Wireless, the G Pro X Wireless, and even Sony's own Pulse 3D headset. So those out of are all those, awful. why this one? Well, to answer that, we have to look at a couple of things. What's in the box, the key features, pros and cons. And He's overall, actually wearing it in the video, so there you go. Credit where credit's due. Money. Let's start off with what's in the box. We have a USB-A to USB-C cable. This is used to charge and to hook up your headset. We have a USB transceiver that can hook up to PC or PS5. And lastly is the H9 headset. So you don't get too many things in the box, which is kind the of The headset looks like it's comfortable though. Like the cups look big features. enough that they're they not going to crush the outside of your a ear. a very common feature amongst all other gaming headsets. The tech used here is basically brought over from the 1000X series, which is Sony's flagship active noise cancellation headphones. That includes different settings like an ambient sound mode, which is perfect for those times where you need to hear the Yeah, they look like they would be comfortable. Let's talk about battery life. Because that's the problem problem with a lot of headphones
headphones is the ear cups are way too fucking small and it like crushes the outside of your earlobe a lot of times if you wear them a certain way so the life of this headset is insane. You'll get up to 32 hours with a single charge. And if you're running out of juice, a quick 10 minute charge is going to give you a whole another hour. And let me tell you, that feature has come in super handy whenever I forget to charge the headset. Bro, turn that motion blur off on your PC. That is gross. Now let's talk about the build quality. We have a really nice soft headband that you can wear for hours. This includes a memory foam like material in the middle part of the headband and a couple of plastic pieces on each side. I have to say this part does creak a little bit so you might want to look out for this if you ever flex your headset moving on dog is he wearing airpods underneath his headphones why ew oh, i used to do that back in the day and it was like literally the most uncomfortable shit ever flex your headset. Moving on from the headband, we have a couple of synthetic leather ear pads. They fit really nice around my ears, and you can tell this really does help with the active noise cancellation. This also in turn helps with Sony's 360 spatial sound. This allows you to hear every single footstep, every single explosion, with a sense of realism, which is exactly what you need whenever you're gaming. This is elevated even more if you're exclusively using this with your PS5, because this headset does take advantage of the PS5's Tempest 3D audio tech. One of my Yawn. My favorite features. I also love that we have all of the PS5 integrations, like seeing your headphones volumes, the battery life, and your game and chat mix. That's on your right ear cup, as well as the power and Bluetooth buttons. You heard me right, we also have Bluetooth with this headset. This allows you to connect to another device like your phone or your iPad, which is what I mic. Let's go ahead and do a mic test. Hello, this is a mic test from the Rode VideoMic Pro. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. Hello, hello. This is a mic test from the InZone H9 headset. Testing one, two, three. That doesn't sound that bad for a fucking headset, mic. Three, testing one, two, three. As you heard from the That sounds like every other headset mic I've ever heard, so that's not really that bad. Mic test, it doesn't really- I already have a microphone literally one centimeter from my face, so I don't really even care about it sound all too great. It makes my voice sound really tinny and also picks up a lot of feedback from outside noises. But at least you can change your gain settings in the InZone Hub app, which is limited to your computer. All you have to do is take the receiver and plug it into your PC, then toggle the switch over to PC. Here you can customize the sound profiles, whether that's choosing from a preset or customizing your own. You can also customize a lot of the other options, like the spatial audio or the amount of side tone that you get with your mic. This is really cool as you can change the settings to fit your needs. Now that we've gone through our list of key features, let's go ahead and cover the pros and cons. My favorite feature of the headset hands down has to be the noise cancellation. Living in an apartment, there's so many noises that happen all around me and being able yeah, I hate it when I'm up at night playing video games all alone by myself and I hear my uh, neighbors laughing and having a good time and then eventually fucking all night long because it just reminds me of how lonely I am. So, you know, living in an apartment, it's really nice to be able to block all that shit out able to drown out all that sound and focus on what I'm playing, words can't explain how satisfying that is. This feature right here really distinguishes it from all others. As well as my next positive, all of the PS5 integrations. Words can't explain how happy I get to see all the UI elements pop up on my TV screen. To me, this is the kicker over the SteelSeries Nova Pro Wireless. The last positive point I want to talk about is the battery life. Guys, I don't know how many times I laid my fat butt on that couch, had an all-day gaming session, and Oh my god. It's nothing to be proud of, dude. Never not once worried about my battery life. The charge will last me at least two full days of gaming. I usually charge my headset at the end of the night anyways, but it's nice to know if I ever forget, it can last a whole nother day. I've been saying nothing but positive things about this headset, but there are definitely some cons that I do want to talk about with you, just so you can be aware of them and you can look out for them. Honestly, there's nothing really I can call a deal breaker, but I do have a few gripes. So for one, this headset, I really don't recommend wearing it outside of your house I look like one <laughs> is that actually something people are gonna do bro do people actually wear their gaming fucking headphones out of the house like all right guys i'm gonna go to the grocery store real quick but you know i'll still be on discord with my fucking headset on like bro oh my god that's fucking sad one of those people in those airplane towers you know like the ones that operate their airplane towers yeah this thing is 
This thing is pretty chonky. The ear cups are huge and I constantly bump into things, which leads to scuffs on the ear cups themselves. It's nothing that you can't wipe away, but still annoying nonetheless. Besides the ear cups, I do want to complain about the headband. I really don't like how the cushion is just centered in the middle. I really wish this would have spread across the whole entire headband, or at least past the point where they're at now. It kind of gives a headset a cheap feel, which for $299 is not a really good feeling. The last crap I have is with the microphone. Boy oh boy, where do I start from here? Again, for a flat I'm not headset, even buying really it. Really PC up. player. I really do think this type of headset. I know in an updated version or a second version, they can definitely make great. I guess the question is, is how much is it compared to the Astros? But I don't know, man. That feature that I can pass my phone through the headset and still listen to like my fucking PC audio at the same time is really fucking nice. I'm not worried about the price on key. Oh. I mean, I could, although I don't have a Mac, so I don't know how well it would work. I could always get a pair of AirPod Pros, but I don't really know how well that would work on PC. I don't even know if my PC has Bluetooth now that I think about it. That's actually a really fucking good question. <laughs> I don't even know if this computer has Bluetooth. Does this PC even have Bluetooth? I actually don't fucking know. Um, Add a Bluetooth device. Let's see. Oh, I do have Bluetooth. <laughs> Let's fucking go, dude. Hooray. All right, well, I guess I could get AirPod Maxes or whatever the fuck. Because then I could just use them on my PC and phone. Although I have a, I have a pair of Boses I could probably use on my computer. I don't know. Now that I know I have Bluetooth, that kind of opens up a lot of different options. Maybe I could just get some AirPod Maxes because, you know, then I won't look broke. I mean, I'll still be kind of fronting because, you know, I don't have a Mac, but it's still better than nothing. You never used Bluetooth on your PC? I didn't know I had it, so no, I didn't. I've never had a reason to use Bluetooth. You are actually stupid for buying AirPod Maxes? No, I'm just not poor. Uh, so let's see. AirPod Max. How much are those right now? Oh my god, dude, only $500? Wow. That's actually really affordable. All the colored AirPod Maxes are on sale for 400. So like the blue ones are on sale, the green ones are on sale, the pink ones are on sale, and the silver ones are on sale. The black ones are the full price. of an Apple product that's immediately worth the price, guys. 
It has the Apple logo on it. That's all you need to see. Like, bro, tell me these don't look fire. Like, those are clean, bro. I'm glad you have good taste. Have I tried the Apple Mac Pro? No, I have not. The only reason I don't... I never got a Mac for, like, a desktop is because you can't really play games on them, but if Call of Duty becomes playable on Mac, then maybe I would consider it. So then, let me pull up my, let's pull up the options here. Let's pull up the options. Y'all let me know what you think I should get. Then we got uh, Astro A50s. Those are on sale too for $15 off, man. What a steal. So this is the other headset. Oh, the Sony headphones are $50. I could just use an old pair of Bose headphones I have if I can find them. Yo, let me try that real quick. Oh wait, no, they're fucking, they charge with micro USB. Hmm. I don't know if I want to dig those out, <laughs> if I'm being honest. Dude, micro USB is literally the biggest piece of shit to ever fucking exist. Micro USB is literally fucking horrible. So we got that, that, and that. Those are the options, I guess. So let's see. I silo with the 5. My Arctic Pro Wireless does that. It also helps. The PS5 has Discord now. Arctic Pro works with everything. It's priced. Oh, let me pull those up. Arctic I don't really care about the price. It's not really that big a deal. So are they wired or wireless? Because ideally I would want something wireless because I don't really like having a cord hanging down in front of me all the time. Let's see, most of them with the two, these aren't good compared to other 250 ones. Which ones? The Apple ones? Or the Sony ones? I Siler with the 10, I use Bluetooth for my speakers 24 seven and AirPods for PS5, Surface Pro and my phone slash Discord. Granted, I'm never on my Surface. Nova for sweat matches and COD, AirPods only work for PS5 through Discord. Interesting. 
Hmm. Yeah, I don't know, man. I gotta see. And Rashtam with the two only can connect one at a time. F the maxes for PC slash iPhone. So wait, for these, you can only have like your computer audio coming through or your phone audio, or can you have both of them at the same time? So like if I'm listening to a movie or some shit on my phone, I can't also have PC audio coming through this headset at the exact same time. I know for the AirPods, you can only do one at a time because it's just Bluetooth. This has two like bands though. It has like the fucking 2.4 gig like gigahertz connection through the dongle and then also Bluetooth. Sony, yes. AirPod, no. Hmm. Yeah, that is kind of a nice selling point. I hate shopping for fucking headphones, bro. It's like always exhausting. There's too many options. There just needs to be like one definitive, like best headset. And then that's it. Yo, have you guys seen that shit if you have an iPad and a MacBook? Where, like, you're using your mouse on the MacBook Pro, and if you go off screen in whatever direction your iPad is sitting, your mouse will appear on the iPad as well. Have y'all seen that feature? That is, like, so fucking mind-blowing, dude. Like, Apple just has, like, some insane tech features, man. Like, their connectivity with their devices is fucking wild. Yeah, your iPad basically becomes a second monitor. It's crazy. Styler with the five Steel Series Arctis Nova Pro. Uh, wireless Xbox multi system gaming heads. Here, let me see. Sam thingy too. to decide what I want to fucking get. get AirPods if you have Apple stuff? Well, I have an iPhone, so. 
and an Apple Watch. I want to get a MacBook Pro, man, but I'm holding off on buying a laptop because I barely use mine anyway. Yeah, I don't know. I just got to think about it, man. I hate shopping for headsets. Same like with shopping for monitors, bro. It's always a pain in the ass. Yeah, MacBook Pros are just solid ass laptops, man. My last laptop I was gonna buy was going to be Mac, but then I found out for like my master's program, I needed a Windows laptop. So it was like, ah, oh, fuck. So I bought the Surface Book 3, which for the per like first six months, it was really nice, but then it started having a shit ton of problems, which is why I think they discontinued that product. But yeah, I don't know, man. I feel like if I had a MacBook Pro, I would use it a lot, but I just don't really know if it's justifiable to drop like two grand on something on the off chance I do decide to use it. Well, it was mainly software problems I had with my uh, Surface Book 3. Like, hardware-wise, it's fine. It's just, like, literally the thing stopped charging because, like, it wouldn't detect that the keyboard module was attached, which is where, like, half of the battery is, and it would just charge the top part, even though you plug it into the bottom part. Like, a lot of really weird shit, man. Or, like, not being able to update the clock in my settings. You know, it not detecting, like, basic shit. It's just, I've had nothing but problems with that laptop. But now that I have an iPhone, it makes a lot of sense to get a MacBook Pro, because it's like I can do all my shit on both devices. And it's like that seamless transition between, like, Apple products. Someone was streaming you on Rumble yesterday? What do you mean? Griffin can't say transition without fumbling. Yeah, that's because I failed at my transition new generation. Thanks for rubbing it in, bro. Real supportive of someone who's going through a lot. I make a rumble channel guys I think I already have a rumble account that I locked in when the app first launched but I haven't, like, used it for anything. Let me check.
fuck? I'm already signed in on my phone. I don't remember signing in on this shit. Hold on. Let me see if I can get into the account. I'm gonna try to sign in on my computer. Rumble. I don't remember signing in on my phone. Sign in. Attempting too fast, invalid. All right, let's see. Oh, I got in. Count over. It's literally my fucking username. What the fuck? So my username is literally fucking Griffin Gaming. But the channel name Griffin Gaming is not available? What the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck? How can, like, my username be taken? Or not be taken, but the channel name is? That's weird. Final description. Title is required. In the title. nothing on there but hey I have a uh, channel bro the logo um i can put it up there let me see paste uh my channels i guess the thumbnail is what you put for the channel icon um let's just put a picture of apollo up there bro save Why not? Is it gonna fucking save? My channels. 
Yep, Apollo's up there now. Cool. <laughs> there you go. Make sure to give me a follow, guys. I gotta launch my uh, Rumble career. Only three followers? Damn. I don't know. Maybe I will put some videos on fucking uh, Rumble. Let's do a poll real quick. curious. I don't feel like a lot of people do. For me, it says you have one follower. Well, it probably just has an update for you. It says three followers on mine. I don't fucking know. Yo, I can follow myself. Now I have four. Let's go. Hell yeah. What am I going to upload? Um, I don't fucking know. What type of content's popular on Rumble? Let's see. They have like a homepage or some shit. I don't really use Rumble at all. So top live categories. I don't really care about that. Gaming. There's people with like 20 viewers right now. Live. Kaysen is live with... 2,900 viewers. Uh. Oh, that's right, yeah. I think I made this account to follow. Yeah. Rice gum is on here. Fresh and Fit is on here. Uh, can I just do a uh, trending? There we go. Live from Nashville, the Dan Bongino show. I don't know who that is. Uh, it must be done right and according to the rule of law. No mistakes, election interference. WEF admits Maui wildfires orchestrated to transform Hawaii. Uh... The truth about testosterone. Dude, I should just put some schizo shit on here. I should just upload a video and say this is why they don't want you to be wealthy. And then I could just make a shit ton of money. I silent with the two, leave your streams up on Rumble. 
Oh, uh, if I stream there, I probably would, yeah. I don't really think you have to worry about anything over there. And you generation with the five, react to this real quick. Your other one's 48 minutes, bro. I don't know if this is going to be real quick. I left the job that I truly love oh, okay. to do this. Right. Here, let me back. Is he gonna cry? It's not very alpha male of him. So I left a job that I truly loved to do this. Oh, fuck, dude. I don't know why the menu of COD freezes up Chrome, dude. Like, the menu should not even be fucking using anything. Right, because I shouldn't be admitting this, but I can't saving children, shit. right? That was great, but saving you guys is better. <laughs> what? What the fuck is he talking about? Huh? Um. Yeah, man, this is tough, bro. Cause uh, we put our lives into this, you know. <sighs> we didn't miss a day, honestly. And the Oscar goes to. Um. It's tough. I can't afford this. We gave up so much. Yeah, fuck them kids, bro. But not the EDP way. To uh. Give you guys value, so um. Yep. <laughs> what the fuck was the point of that? That was like, bruh. That was some trash tier acting, man. That was like some absolute fucking trash tier acting. <laughs> For males, bro, why are they shedding a tear? I thought real men don't fucking cry. Um, Oski Oski with the five. I'm hoping Darksiders 4, you can play as all the four horsemen if you choose. Which one you want? Death is my favorite, and I will always choose him. Yeah, I don't know, man. I haven't looked into Darksiders 4. Have they shown anything off for that yet? Hopefully that comes out. I would love for the story to actually progress past Darksiders 1. That'd be kind of crazy, right? I don't know. Maybe that's too much to ask at this point. Griffin pre-ordered Modern Warfare 3. Not yet, but I will. The Grizz with the 2, can we watch this? What are you saying like this? I don't see anything. What is this? Bro, why is it taking so long to load? Bruh. Bruh. Come on, man. What the fuck? What the fuck is it doing? I don't have any resource packs. You can pack these nuts into your ass, bro. Like, what the fuck is this shit? <laughs> what the fuck? Wait, you can emote in Minecraft? No fucking way, dude. Oh, what's the uh, button to like change your? Uh... There you go. 
Let's see what happens. Whoa! I can stab myself in the head. Clapping. Look, dude, I can heil Hitler. That's wild, man. <laughs> Dude, it's like that episode of Family Guy when they're trying to get pot, like, legal. And Peter makes the fucking ad where it's like Hitler smoking a fucking joint. And then he's like, everyone, reach for my blunt. And that's all the fucking Nazis, like, saluting him. That's what this shit reminds me of. <laughs> like, fuck. Uh, I saw it with a five. You see the option for open combat and stealth for MW3. You'll probably like that campaign better. Also, I think you missed my other chat. Uh, give me one second. I haven't looked over there. Uh, yeah, I did. Oh, I mean, you don't have to stream there, but post your stream after YouTube. I don't know how. I don't know if my computer could handle recording and streaming like long term at the same time. You'd probably, I need probably need to use like a uh, dedicated PC for that, because basically streaming and recording would require two encoding sequences, which would be pretty fucking taxing on my hardware. So I'd probably need like a dedicated PC to route a PC through a capture card to then open up OBS and use that capture card input to stream and record from. So yeah, I'd probably have to get another computer to like run a computer through just for that purpose. But as far as the MW3 campaign, I just hope, like, there's more set pieces, man, and they get rid of the body armor bullshit, and it's not just, like, generic mission structure. Like, I want the missions to be exciting again. Uh, Oski Woski with the 10. Mute Eyesiler, he's becoming annoying. Damn, bruh. Uh, where are those now? Gaming. Okay. All right, I Siler. I gotta send you to Ban World, buddy. All right. Now I don't remember how to get out of this view. There we go. Ban, 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 ban. Gone. Forever. Yo, what was that other clip I wanted to grab at some point? I forgot. Let me see. generation with a 10 mute oski waski uh-oh damn man welcome to van world oh that's what it was i've been calling a bear a few times but it was by gay guys Gay guys love me. <laughs> this one. It is If my kids grow up to be gay, I'm beating the shit out of them. <laughs> really? That'll, that'll beat them straight. Yeah, that'll make them straight. Trust me. No, <laughs> look here. There, there's two choices in life. Wings. You pretend you're straight, or I beat you to death. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. I forgot about that one. 
it is. If my kids grow up to be gay, I'm beating the shit out of them. Really? That'll, that'll beat them straight. Yeah, that'll make them straight. Trust me. <laughs> no, look here. There, there's two choices in life. Wings. You pretend you're straight, or I beat you to death. <laughs> you pretend you're straight, or I'm beating you to death. But let me say this. If my kids grow up to be gay, I'm beating the shit out of them. Really? That'll, that'll beat them straight. Yeah, that'll make them straight. Trust me. No, look here. There, there's two choices in life. Wings. You pretend you're straight, or I beat you to death. <laughs> bro. Oh my god, bro. Wings. No, he doesn't have kids. Alright, let's edit that real quick. I forgot about that one, man. Oh, fuck. What happened? Definitely not Oski Woski in the skies of the 10. Mute you, generation. Did you really think I had one account? Come on now. You can't do that to me. You're coming with me. I'm gonna come. All right, man. Let me see where your generation is. Well, the last thing he said was bye bye, so bye bye. All right, he gone. I can't afford this shit. Hey, where is that? There it is. Either subscribe, subscribe, donate, or get the fuck out. Let me say, say this, if, if, if my kids grow up to be gay, I'm beating the shit out of them. <laughs> oh my god, bro. Really? That'll, that'll beat them straight. Yeah, that'll make them straight. Trust me. No, look here. <laughs> there, there's two choices in life. You, you pretend you're straight or I beat you to death. <laughs> in my life. No, look here. No. no. Look here. There, there's two choices in life. Wings. You pretend you're straight, or I beat you to death. <laughs> Holy fuck, man. Wings. Out of them. Look here. There, there's two choices in life. Pretend you're straight. Or I beat you to death. If my kids grow up to be gay, I'm beating the shit out of them. <laughs> Look here, there, there's two choices in life. Wings. You pretend you're straight, or I beat you to death. <laughs> oh my god, bro. If my kids grow up to be gay, I'm beating the shit out of them. <laughs> Look here, there, there's two choices in life. Wings. You pretend you're straight, or I beat you to death. <laughs> oh my god. Definitely not Jim Ryan with the 10. Mute that buster. Definitely not Oz. Oh my god, bro. Here we go. All right, he's off to ban world. And Rick Rob with the five, Kevin Hart made a similar gay joke and got bashed from the Oscars. That was Baze. Yeah, I don't know, bro. This shit's funny as fuck. If my kids grow up to be gay, I'm beating the shit out of them. <laughs> Look here, there, there's two choices in life. Wings. You pretend you're straight or I beat you to death. <laughs> 
<laughs> I beat you to death. Jesus Christ, man. Not even just beat the shit out of you. I beat you to death. Alright, let me render that real quick. I'm gonna call that... Gay... Waves. Save changes. And then MP4 to MP3. Select file. If my kids grow up to be gay, I'm beating the shit out of them. <laughs> Look here, there, there's two choices in Look life. Here. You Queens. pretend you're straight, or I beat you to death. <laughs> Bruh. Oh my god. Secret admirer with the 10. Hi, it's me, Oski Woski. Whenever he comes back into his real account, mute him. Who, you generation? Is he the one who actually had the, uh, definitely not Jim Ryan account? But yeah, I can. All right, so I got to move the current thing over here. Actually, I'll put it up top next to DSP. And we'll drop... Gay wings right here. Actually, no. Let's put it there for now. Move shut the fuck over there. And then gay wings under the other wing sounds. Let me know on the sound if you guys think this is uh, loud enough or not. Jeez. Oh, wait, wrong. If my kids grow up to be gay, I'm beating the shit out of them. <laughs> Look here. There, there's two choices in life. Wings. You pretend you're straight or I beat you to death. All right, so am I muting you generation? Secret admirer. All right. Oh, I Siler again. Uh oh. Got him. All right, sounds good, loud. I can turn it down a little bit. Let's see. If my kids grow up to be gay, I'm beating the shit out of them. But look <laughs> here, there, there's two choices in life. Wings. You pretend you're straight or I beat you to death. <laughs> Bruh. Xbox Studios with the two. Actually, the twist is Jim Ryan is my burner. Oh, shit, dude. Damn. I can't afford this shit. Uh oh. All right, I think we're good on the soundboard. Bro, we're almost filling this thing up again. Dude, why are my frames, like, completely fucked right now? How many chunks am I rendering? Let's put it back down to 24. I don't understand why Minecraft only uses, like, 20% of your fucking hardware. It's really irritating. It's, like, literally my CPU and GPU usage whenever I play Minecraft is, like, never above 30%, but the game still runs really fucking bad makes no fucking sense at all it's like it just decides yeah you have a decent pc but we're not gonna fucking use it
either 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 subscribe donate or get the fuck out dbm gaming with the 21 months almost two years with my king oh my god thanks man gaming Yo, what? I should become a Minecraft 2010 YouTuber? Bro, what's that really shitty fucking song that everyone used to have as like their intro? Um, fuck. Let me see if I can remember. I think it was called like. What was that really shitty fucking song? Was it this? Hold on, I think this was a... Like, every fucking weirdo on YouTube had this as their intro. Hold on. Is it gonna play? This shit. Guys, do you remember this shit? Every fucking cringy, like, fucking gaming YouTuber used to have that shit as their intro music. The fucking Suicide Sheep song. I forgot about that shit. I hated that fucking song with a passion. Shit's so bad. Hold on. I think it loaded now. Eight years ago. <laughs> the Fat Rat Unity? I remember that one too. Yeah, that shit was trash. The Fat Rat Unity. Let's give everybody PTSD of cringe. Uh, why is it not playing? Dude, my Chrome tabs are, like, insanely fucking slow tonight. I don't know why. I don't even have anything open on my computer, pretty much. It's just odd, dude. Very odd. Oh, this one? Yeah. This was not the one I was thinking of. And it froze. Let me close it to that. See if that helps it. I don't understand. I think it's just because I have like all these videos open up and different fucking things. Bruh. I remember this one. See if I can find this other one. Um, let's see. Videos. Popular. Uh, 
Was it this one? Yeah, this one. Why is it buffering, dude? You can just hear the fucking tutorial video in the background of this one. This one was popular for a while, too. <sighs> Dude, why the fuck is Chrome so screwed up tonight? I don't get it. Let me just close out of it. Copy. I'm just going to close out of that entire fucking window, and I'm going to see if that's the problem. Because sometimes individual Chrome windows can get fucked up for whatever reason. Yep, that was the issue. It's the fucking window. This fucking song, bruh. all not remember this one all the fucking wannabe trick shotters and shit used to use this <laughs> i know dude it's horrible <laughs> This is like a major fucking throwback to like 2000, what, 13 or 14? Yeah, 2013, man. A decade old, man. guys welcome today to my minecraft tutorial today i'm going to show you guys how to effectively strip mine for diamonds but before we get into it make sure to drop a like on the video leave a comment down below and make sure to subscribe here it comes guys get ready here it comes Oh shit, dude. I feel like an airplane's gonna crash into that tower at any second now, guys, because this shit is big. Oh, 
This is more raw than when I go into your sister. Hell yeah, dude. That shit was fire. Let's see what else is on there. I'm just looking at the uh, NCS channel and searching by most popular. You find like all these old like wannabe MLG songs. I mean, some of their songs can be decent, but a lot of them are cringe. Oh, uh, let's see. What else do they have on here? Oh, this one. I remember this one. Do you guys remember this one? This one was in a lot of tutorial videos. show you how to sync your printer to your iPhone step one connect printer to Wi-Fi using built-in settings menu when connected to Wi-Fi download printer app from absolute app store oh the music stopped Instructions over, guys. But yeah, I think everyone gets the point, right? The cringe fucking generic YouTube music. The end of an era, man. I watched a lot of SFM Gmod animations with that music from back in the day. I'm sorry, man.
But yeah, that's just like one of those things you would always have like the Indian guy with like the really basic fucking tutorial videos with the blaring dubstep music in the background that you could barely hear him talk over and it was like literally the worst fucking instructions ever. But just because people would constantly look it up, you could just impression farm off of it and get millions upon millions of views. That was the original AI video creation. They would just get, like, fucking entire, like, warehouses of computers and a bunch of random Indian guys to, like, talk into a microphone and just farm out those generic tutorial videos to make money. Which, I mean, I guess is kind of smart, but, you know... That was the original AI, guys. We've come a long way. Does my character look like it would commit suicide, guys? I don't know. He looks like he's at his breaking point. I don't want to do it. I can't afford this shit! I give up. I can't do it, guys. I'm gonna go to sleep and get a good night rest. Ah, uh, let's see. DBM Gaming with the two. Respect trans kids. Affirm trans rights. Stand with Ukraine. Black Lives Matter. Trans visibility is valid. And DBM Gaming with the two. What's up, gamers? What are we doing tonight? Uh, that's a good question, man. I'm not exactly sure. And Shadowband Gang with the five. A oh, Alan Walker music was also used a lot. Yeah, that stupid fucking faded song. That shit is so bad. That song is actually garbage. But I guess we should probably do videos because it's getting late. Dude, I slept until like fucking six today. It was really sad. Then I took my dog for a fucking walk. And then I went back to sleep. And then I woke up at like 10 something. Dude, I wasn't even asleep at 7 a.m., so get on my fucking level, bitch. That was my depression. That's right. Nah, I'm just way too fucking tired these days. So I just, like, basically recoup on the fucking weekend. Do I think Jim Ryan is going to get fired? Probably not right now.
None of these videos make me want to click on them, man. None of these videos are enticing. Every country on earth fights for 250,000. I don't really care. Best fails of the year. Not really worried about that. Lionel Messi. Don't give a fuck. ABN headlines. What the fuck is ABN? Uh, she asks if I know Tennessee whiskey. Don't fucking give a shit. Building a private pool. I mean, those are kind of cool videos, but I ain't watching it. Uh, calm your mind. No thanks. I survived the nuke. No, you fucking didn't. Post Malone's last meal. Unfortunately, it's not. Uh, I hired a Fortnite pro to secretly troll Nick A30. Don't fucking give a shit. Writing and reading a poem about eye content. What the fuck? And doctor reacts to Cartoon Network medical scenes. Why don't you go actually do something fucking product like productive with your fucking medical degree, dude? Why the fuck? Do you give a shit about Cartoon Network medical scenes? I don't know, man. I ain't built for this fucking platform anymore, guys. There's too much gay shit on here. not having sex with you again you're my sister what's goody it's your boy rhino what's damn bro why not nobody loves you like family oh yeah no <laughs> yeah dude i just bubble wrap my dick yeah it was like hey you gotta use protection you know <laughs> girls these days <laughs> wrap it up you know <laughs> bubble wrap <laughs> Hey, babe. Yeah, tonight when I get home, I wanted to try something different. I wanted to try out the SpongeBob role play. Yeah, I'm gonna be SpongeBob and you're gonna be Sandy. Yeah, I'm gonna get all up in your bikini bottom if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Hello? Yeah, did you get my text? That was probably bred at college. Real talk, like... That's probably what Brett looks like. The sticker bombed laptop, the fucking nerdy glasses, the messy bun. Like, bro, this is probably Brett. Starbucks. Jealous that other people are in a relationship. Yup, it's Brett. Hello? Yeah. Did you get my text? Mm hmm. Oh, yeah. No, I said tonight when I come over, you better milk me like a cow. <laughs> yeah. And then can we put a fishbowl on your head? No, I'm Dirty Dan. No, I'm Dirty Dan. Why are you calling me Pinhead? No, I'm Dirty Dan. I'm Dirty Dan. I'm Dirty Dan. No, I'm Dirty Dan. What the fuck is Dirty Dan? Dan. <laughs> And you better spank me so I'm squealing like a little pig. Hell yeah, dude. You know? Like, Sue. Yo, bro. I was with this girl last night, and she had six toes. I best <laughs> believe I sucked on all six. No, no. I had to show love to the second pinky toe. I gave her a little... It was a mouthful, bro. I'm telling you. Like a little pig, you know what I'm saying? Had me squealing. Hello? I'm not having sex with you again. You're my sister. Hell yeah. I told we can't keep doing this. Okay, <laughs> yeah, incest is the new wave, whatever. But we can't keep doing this. <laughs> Bro. Yeah, I think I might have nasolingus. 
Yeah, nasolingus is the arousal of sucking on someone's nose. No, no, so like what happened was this girl went in to kiss me and I just went straight for the nose. I got the whole nose <laughs> in my mouth. You are my sister. The baby's gonna come out deformed. <laughs> I'm, I mean, okay, we could do the role play. I'm like, I'm Ash and you're Pikachu, right? And it's uh, like, uh, <laughs> and you can be in the bedroom and you're like, Pika Pika. And then I'm like, gotcha, bitch. And I throw the Pokeball at you. Yeah. <laughs> But the thing was, she was with it. So then I just started sucking on her nose all night. You know, like a little I think I messed around and got a boogie in my mouth, but that was the best part. <laughs> what do you mean you never sucked on somebody's nose? Oh shit, Don't... man. These videos are copyrighted now. I'm getting the fucking warning. Look at this shit. We've detected video in your stream that belongs to someone else. These guys have fucking copyrighted their videos and uploaded them as TV episodes. Love, live, serve? Who is love, live, serve? Yeah, so whatever this company is that owns this channel, they're uploading them as fucking television episodes. So, yeah. That shit's cringe. I can't afford <coughs> 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 Fuck. Sorry, I was choking on the cringe. That's lame, bro. Why are YouTubers doing that shit? Like, I don't understand this whole copyright bullshit. It's so dumb. Subtitles generated by AI. All right. Let's see if we can skip through part of this. The intro we don't need to watch. What's next? What's a CSGO skin? We know about that. So let's go here. In a previous video, I mentioned that the presence of these websites feels overwhelming. They are advertised everywhere, and as a result, they might be a lot more popular than what you seem to think. I want to give you a bit of perspective, but I cannot say the name of this website, otherwise you will think I'm promoting it. So I'm gonna call it Stake. Stake is the biggest online casino. You find them advertising in football and online. Recently banned from Twitch, they have created their own streaming platform that is Kick. In the month of April, Stake registered 28 millions of visits. Now, for the same period, those CSGO websites which I am tracking reached 47 millions of visits, and I am not tracking them all. So when you bring them together, those CSGO websites bring almost double the traffic of the biggest online casino today and this online so csgo gambling's fucking based man what's wrong with that doom boom of the five for context on dirty dan watch dirty dan scene survival of the idiots well i just got a fucking copyright warning so if i pull up a tv show the stream could go down so i don't think i can man no tv clips right now but if it's a Spongebob reference, that makes sense why I haven't fucking seen it, because I didn't really ever watch Spongebob that much. I silently with the two, probably ignore the other one then. That fucking blows. Um, it's a different channel, so it should be alright. The Siri in the Library Part 2, that should be fine. I, it's not from the same channel, so I don't think it should be an issue. Online casino declared a gross revenue of 2.6 billions in 2022. Now, that doesn't mean the CSGO websites are grossing more, but it's a great element to put things in perspective. You heard about CSGO, you heard about gambling, you might think we are talking about a niche, but are we? Gaming is space. These websites are present everywhere and at every level of the industry. It doesn't matter where you look, you will be exposed to some kind of promotion for sure, and I can show this to you. I've collected data on Twitch. This is the top 300 CSGO streamers since the beginning of this year, ranked by watch time. It is quite a painful process, but I went and I checked how many of them are promoting that kind of stuff. Out of 300, 226 are currently sponsored by at least one of them. Some have up to five. We are looking at 75%. Out of four streamers, three are currently promoting these websites live on Twitch. By the way, Twitch GOS are explicitly forbidding you to promote affiliate codes and links to sites that contain slots, roulettes, or dice games. And also for a gambling website. Yeah, none of those are slots, roulette, or dice games. 
It's just skin trading, man. To be allowed on Twitch, they take into account a US license and sufficient consumer protection. I have reached out to Twitch for a comment, but they denied. YouTube is a bit harder to analyze, but I found that 80% of the creators uploaded at least one video or one integration inside the video to promote one of these websites since 2023. By the way, YouTube TOS are explicitly forbidding you to promote links to online gambling as well as any promotion to online gambling that doesn't have the Google certification. And now here's a fun fact. During the making of this video, I have uploaded a small segment so that the lawyers could watch it for me. YouTube flagged that segment for promotion of unregulated gambling and they have applied a lifetime warning to my channel for promotion of unregulated dog why is he going karen mode like why are people actively trying to fuck with people's careers i just don't get this shit why is everyone like literally just trying to fucking get everybody banned for some stupid fucking shit man if people want to fucking gamble in csgo let them fucking gamble in csgo why the fuck do you care but we gotta save the kids guys kids don't have Thirty thousand dollars in fucking CS:GO skins, bro. Hated gambling on a video I am making to educate the people about that. It's been something like a month now, and I don't think it's gonna go away. But you know, whatever. So Twitch, YouTube. Now, what about esports? A lot of pro players are also sponsored by them. You will find teams and even HLTV, which is a website everyone uses to keep track of those matches. We've just had a major in Paris, a Valve sponsored event, but we could find some sponsors on the jerseys of the players, some of which even have CS:GO in their name. So if we zoom out, we are in a situation where if you're watching streamers on Twitch, almost eight out of ten will send you there. If you're watching YouTubers, eight out of ten will send you there. And if you're watching esports, it's everywhere as well. So we can agree on saying that these websites have become central to the industry. It doesn't matter where you look, you will be exposed to them for sure. I, I have not introduced the main players yet, so here's a quick overview. Here's one of them. This one is very popular. Uh, I style over the 10, dude. This copyright is trash. I'm genuinely sorry. I can't tell what it aside from the obvious. Well, yeah, there's no way to tell if some fucking YouTube channel is being a dick about it. Like, typically, you don't have to worry about it from, like, YouTube videos like that. It's just whatever channel network is managing them uploaded it as like a tv episode instead of like an actual youtube video and it's irritating so there's nothing you can do to like figure that out it's just kind of one of those things that uh you learn at the moment it's all good i posted the same channel videos before it's shot yeah it's just weird man because some videos they might have registered under like you know a normal youtube video and some they might have as like a tv episode it's just it's odd there's no way to tell for the first time, I will log into the website. So first of all, I click on sign in. Uh, I agree, of course. Sign in through Steam. Sign in. All right, and just like that, I'm already in. Now, you see, they have what they call cases, and they all have a price. If you want to open them, you have to deposit. So, refill. I can deposit with a credit card, pay card, PayPal, crypto, Google Pay, or even CSGO skins. In which case, they will credit my account with the value of my skin. If I click on this button, I'm going to spend $6. Something's going to spin, and this is the odds inside of the case. All right, click. I've got myself $3. Now I can either sell it right away and get the balance back or gamble it again. Everything is designed to facilitate the gambling of your winnings. When I click on upgrade, I am sent here. This is what I've just unboxed. Now I select on how risky I want it to be, let's say 2x, and I have 43% chance to double it. Uh, yeah. Oops. <laughs> well, I've lost everything, but at least I'm getting better. Uh, near miss. Yeah, once again, I was very close, but not quite. So how much that sold for? $1? So this is one of them, but there's many more, and they all have their own differences. Some will allow you to cash out in skins, some will have crypto, some of them only have cases, and some have stuff like Red, uh, Blinko, Crash Mines. Essentially, they have a whole variety of game modes, which, as far as I can tell, I would describe as gambling. Which actually raises the question, what is considered gambling in the eyes of the law? Uh, my name is Michele Magro, I'm a... Who cares? Looks like. So there is normally a body, uh, usually government run, uh, that uh, basically makes sure that you're complying with um, the law that applies to gambling companies. Um, uh, for example, in some countries, you are required to connect directly with um, uh, an IT system owned by the government, where basically... Based in Denmark, I was on the region lawyer. I work within tech, esports, IP, and marketing. I advise players, organizations, tournament organizations, investors, sponsors, like the full circle all around. And I've also worked uh, with several esports organizations. Gambling is based, by guys. Companies. You take money from a bunch of degenerate retards and put it in your own pocket. Sounds like a win-win to me. To be sponsors, so I have insight of, of this world. In Denmark, we have this called the Danish Gambling Authorities. You must obtain this license from, it's called Spilmedelene, but the Danish Gambling Authority. And if you don't have the license, then you wouldn't be operating legally in Denmark. Like one of the things you have to make sure of as a content creator is, is this online casino actually licensed by the Danish Gambling Authorities?
if, it, if they're not licensed, then you have to. The Danish gambling authorities? Dog, I don't give a fuck about the Danish gambling authorities. Huge problem. You're actually part of this illegal promoting of online casinos that is definitely not allowed in the market without license. So that will be illegal for you to do. And you'll also be fined personal. Um, so yeah, I mean, I'm happy to answer any questions. I've done this for Train and a few others, just answering, I guess, my, our perspective, um, okay. at least from the business side. And I, I have no issue with being recorded. Um, I want to make that completely clear. Meet Hobbs. He is the owner of Clash.gg. His identity will remain anonymous for obvious reasons. Hobbs has a different approach to this. While every other website that I contacted ran away from me like the stinky French boy I am, Hobbs reached out so we could have a chat. He agreed to be recorded and to respond to my question. Gaming law, especially international gaming law, is so complicated and there's so yeah. many different ways that you can interpret it. For example, um, specifically, Clash itself is not considered a casino. You're not considered um, an online gambling platform, right? We're technically a sweepstakes site, which allows us to operate in the U.S. Yeah, that's in the U.S. I can, okay. I'm gonna have to, I, I'm happy to send you our le EU legal opinion as well, um, okay. that shows exactly where we stand. Um, okay. Put them out there, they can receive scrutiny. Um, we're extremely confident in their validity. Is this a good site to sell my skin? So to break it down for you, according to- I should sell my fucking Karambit. Uh, I sell over the five, good chance the remaining videos are the same. Ignore those. Do we have time for a 20 minute video that continues? Um, yeah, I don't really see why not. We're probably good. The owner of Clash, Clash.gg is allowed to exist because it isn't a gambling casino. Because every 30 minutes, free coins are handed out to everyone present on the site. The players can access the entirety of the website for free. There is no obligation to deposit, thus they are not a gambling operation. You pay the price for that, definitely. Um, we give out tens and tens of thousands of dollars that comes out to hundreds of thousands of dollars a month to the players, but it allows us um, to be not to not be a, a casino. Um, in the eyes of the Th law. That's what you mean, looks like a loophole, like actually a crazy loophole. That just because you have like a free feature that eventually gives out a few cents every now and then, you are allowed to get away by saying you're not a gambling, even though that's what we've been discussing so far. You are a gambling casino. Um, like we the, aren't, on, under the eyes of like... Yeah, like, I, I understand like, like, that the legal stance is that um, you guys aren't, but like, <laughs> it's, that's what, that's, that doesn't make sense to me, is, is how it's so obvious that it's a, it's a loophole, you know, it's a technicality, and, and, and not just Clash, like everybody else, with the marketplace bullshit as well. Uh, it blows my mind that there's no, no organization, no regulation, you know, that comes in and say, uh, well, no. the, I mean, part of the way, part of the way you guys see it is this is the way the law was written. Like it might, it might, it might be a loophole, but this has existed for a long time and is the way the law is written to allow for like sweepstakes opportunities for web, like people like, um, for example, like you can win this car for free in an ad, you know what I mean? Like, oh, mm -hmm. like just by texting so-and-so to the number, blah, 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 like that is free entry. And then like, oh, down the line, you might have a better chance if you go into the dealership and you buy so-and-so to win this car. But at the same time, like these laws themselves have been used for decades, right? Okay. Exactly. Don't hate the player, hate the fucking game, man. To facilitate this type of chance-based play, if you will. Some will say they are marketplaces, some will say they are skin trading websites, and some will say they are free to use websites. My point is that none of them is actually saying that they are an online gaming platform for a reason. And mind you, we've talked about Clash or CSGO Roll, but I need you to understand I am targeting the system as a whole. Yes, we talked about CSGO Roll because their sponsorship with G2 put them on the front row, and we talked about Clash because the owner was willing to talk to me, which again I respect. But the point I'm making here is that we should not be focusing on one or two websites specifically. I could have picked anyone on that list and the same could have been said. Not a single one of them is currently showing a valid gambling license. Not a single one. In the case of um, I believe they have a Curacao license. Um, does that mean with just this license and this license alone, they are, you know, allowed to exist and service every country? Uh, unless there is literally no laws in the country. Gambling law uh, generally applies country by country. So uh, if uh, the Netherlands uh, write a law on gambling, then uh, whatever happens to Dutch customers would be subject to Dutch law. So if Dutch law says you need to have a Dutch license, then a Curacao license um, would not be sufficient to accept Dutch customers. Look at this one here. It doesn't even have cases. It's a website where you log in with your Steam account, deposit with the usual payment method, but you can also use crypto and Cisco skins, and then you can gamble with the money you deposited. You have the classic roulette, a bigger roulette, some kind of jackpot, Mines, etc. And it's not so much relying on the Cisco skins. I am depositing dollars. I am gambling dollars. My winnings are shown in dollars. But then, if I want to cash out, I can only do it in CSGO skins. And today, it is crazy to think about, but almost 8 out of 10 of every content creators in the scene are promoting websites like that to any kind of audience. Audience? If you are a gambling operator, you are forced to verify the identity of every customer you service. That's a problem, and on top of it, you are losing out on a lot of customers. That being said, if you are an exclusively recognized as a skin trading platform, you no longer have to filter your customers, everyone is welcome in. So, do you have a Steam account, and are you able to click on the box? Great, that's all you need. To the question, how old were you when you first gambled in CSGO, 70.8% of you were underaged. This isn't coming out of nowhere. Oh, fuck off, dude. Think of the children. Let me show you how easy it is. Okay, let's go. Then mommy and daddy shouldn't give them fucking money to spend on fucking gambling. That's like if your parents buy you a scratcher. Like, my parents used to always let me go and buy scratchers from the fucking grocery stores when I used to go, like, 
you know, grocery shopping with them. They'd give me like three or four bucks and I would go buy a couple scratchers. Like, what the fuck is wrong with that shit? To prove my case, I have created a... I don't have a gambling addiction. ...brand new Steam account, and because I'm fair, I called it I'm 14, by the way, to make it very obvious and easy for them. So now I want to gamble, and it turns out I am 14, which, uh, saying this out loud that makes me realize that's not even half my age now. I will begin by Keytrop, currently the one with the most visits by themselves. They represent 35% of the entirety of the traffic generated by the CSGO website. In fact, they have a very aggressive marketing strategy right now, and this is why 25% of the top 300 CSGO streamers are directly sponsored by Keytrop. With an average player account showing between 15 and 20,000 players at the same time, I am able to log in with just my Steam account. Yes, yeah, Keytrop is confirmed that. Yes, I am. I am 18 years old, of course. Sign in. <laughs> I am 14, by the way. Right after, I am linked to a deposit page where I can either pay by skins or put my credit card. I decide to use my credit card because the skins will be too easy for sure. There goes 50 euros, and just like that, I am 14, by the way, is allowed. Yeah, dipshit, you wouldn't have a fucking credit card if you're 14. You have to be 18 to get a credit card. Oh my god. To get in. It took me two clicks. Yeah, walk into a bank as a 14-year-old and say, I want a credit card. They're gonna fucking laugh in your face and say, get the fuck out of here. To log in, five to deposit, and that's it. Within just a few minutes, most of it is gone because I'm not lucky with my trades. And when I try to cash out what's left of it, I see a pretty catchy design. I would typically put my trade URL and then press the green button. But that green button is here to tell you you can open a free case if you change your Steam profile picture to their logo. That way, you will promote them to your friends on Steam. And if you do, you can come back every day and open the case for free. Obviously, these cases are abysmal and they got me like five cents. But the point is to get you to come back. The more you do, the more likely you are to deposit again. So I've tried some others, and all I have to do is to sign in through Steam. I don't even have to create an account, and they all have a ton of payment methods to make sure I can deposit. Have a look at the typical experience top right corner signing through steam and now prepaid visas get declined at sites like this for the most part i have to click on two little boxes and that's but a prepaid visa is like the same as like having cash like i don't i don't know again a child doesn't have an income so they would have to get the money from their parents in the first place in order to buy the prepaid visa so it'd be like the exact same thing that's it, I am in. Now I get to enjoy the many features of the site, just like my favorite pro player or YouTuber show me. And if I don't have a credit card, no problem. I can use my CSGO skins or pay safe cards for some of them. I can log into any of these websites with my freshly created I am 14 by the way Steam account. Are we really going to pretend that putting a plus 18 over there is enough to prevent the young one from accessing the website? This is a roulette, literally the symbol of online casino and gambling. Now look, I'm gonna Google casino. What's the first thing I see? A fucking roulette. But the website providing it is not a casino, or at least not regulated like one. So all the kids are welcome to taste some roulette. And again, if you don't have a credit card, that's not a problem. Generally, though, their UI is garbage. It is cramped with moving stuff everywhere, showing you what other players have won in real time. This one is about pizzas, somehow, and this one plays epic music whenever they open stuff. Dude, this is exactly the type of guy that thinks the government should raise his kid for him. So, this is the kind of stuff that 80% or more of every creators in the scene are promoting. Uh, what year is this? 2015? Hello? We know the esport demographic is very young. How many of them are watching their favorite pro player aspiring to become one? You have an influence on people. Some look up to you. So when you promote a website they can access with just their Steam account, no ID verification, and you have a promo code that might give them stuff for free to get them hooked. Are you really going to sit there and tell me that you really believe they won't partake? Because of what? You put a plus 18 in the corner. Some of you don't even bother putting it. Counter-Strike, what the fuck is going on? What are we doing? Have a look at this conversation with one of these websites. He's saying that they aren't gambling, but case opening, which is literally gambling, and then goes on to say that they don't need to KYC because it's not regular practice, so doing it would make them lose money because no one else does it, so they don't do it either. However, in case of withdraw, especially big amount, yeah, at this point, they will have to worry about who you are and they will ask you to verify your identity. <laughs> you know what? Sure, you can come in and gamble, no problem. You keep on losing, no problem. But if you try to withdraw, especially big amount, yeah, um, at this point, I'm gonna have to make sure that you are allowed to gamble in the first place. And you're telling me this like it's a good thing? Hello? Now look at this other one. When I ask them for their KYC practices, he doesn't even know what KYC is. He's asking me if it's RTP or KPI, which are two separate things. But most importantly, KYC is like the most basic thing. Everyone knows what KYC is, especially in work around gambling. This is the kind of self-regulation we have allowed to exist. This is the kind of brands and practices you are proudly endorsing and you put your- Who cares, bruh? Like, I just- This is such a fucking Karen-ass video. Alright, I guess we just need to watch this part. Registration, it's game over for underage gambling. And as you're about to see, it is a real problem we are having in Counter-Strike. That's, yeah? that's okay. okay. Totally. So, right. you have my permission. Like, I didn't stop. It didn't matter if I won or lost. I just wanted to be happy. It sounds wrong, like, be happy. I want to be excited. You know, I was feeling... Yeah. But yeah. In, in, in a 12-year-old's mind, 
a knife is a knife, and like, like I have a big chance. Yes, yes, I was 12 <laughs> when I got introduced to this. My 12 year old mind was like, there is so much bigger chance of winning on these websites than there is on CSGO. And that's, that is true. That's where the trick goes, right? Because then I, I spend more money. One time I hit big, and then, you know, my I just get dopamine. That probably is true, unfortunately. <laughs> Bro, those CSGO cases are stingy as a motherfucker, man. That shit is stingy as a motherfucker, so... That could actually be true. You probably do have a better chance of winning a knife on one of these sites. Um, let's see. So, HTM 101 with the two. Can we watch the Bionicle Mask of Power trailer? Yeah, I guess. And I sadly with the 50... What the fuck, bro? So, the same channel I posted since last year is now copyright gay parody song that's five years old. No, the gay parody songs I've never gotten the copyright issue on. It's just certain YouTubers mark their videos like as non-YouTube videos, basically. And there's really no way to figure it out until you watch it. So I wouldn't worry about it too much, man. It's not that big a deal. It's just one of those things I'll have to keep an eye out for on, like, I guess, larger channels. Because that other one had, like, 9 million subs. But generally speaking, those type of videos should be perfectly fine. It's just kind of like the odd one out every once in a while. Uh, let me know on IG or here. I'm so confused. Here's 50, bro. Well, you did not need to send 50, man. I appreciate it, but damn, that's crazy. But yeah, it should be fine. I mean... It just depends on the channel. Typically, I'm guessing, you know, any channel that's, like, smaller in size is not going to be an issue. But, like, the really, really big ones, they might be doing shit differently now. In my brain. And then I'm like, oh, I gotta go again. And then it starts. Then it's just... Oh, and King Samuel with the two. Only God knows how much I spent on TF2. On God. Yeah, I've spent probably about a thousand bucks total opening Steam. Or, not Steam, uh, CSGO cases. I really haven't, dude, I honestly have not spent that much on CSGO cases. I used to, like, drop, like, 200 bucks every once in a while, but that was about it. I never, like, went fucking balls to the wall fucking crazy on that shit. Cycle, and it keeps going, you know, and obviously you're gonna lose, but, like, you're chasing this stream. As a 12-year-old, you don't understand this, right? Like, you just want to win. You don't understand the economy, or... Um, when we're 12 years old, we were accessing the websites. Uh, yeah. How? How did you access them? Dot com. And, and then uh, I, I logged in on uh, Steam. And at any like point, what? were you ever asked about verification of your age or anything? No, Nothing. no. I mean, like, obviously the small pop-up comes, and we just say yes. There's no verification, just like, are you eating? Yes. yes. I started gambling at 16, and in total, I've lost somewhere in between 10 to 14,000 in gambling over the past few years. My name is... Rookie numbers. Alexander. Manny. Movies. Stefan. Spencer. Rookie. I am 23 years old. 20 years old. 22 years old. I'm 23 years old. I'm 22. I am 22 years old. I'm from Germany. The United States. The UK. Sweden. In Texas. Ireland. And I started gambling when I was 13, 14. 15 years old. But again, when I was 13. 13 to 14 years old. I want to say 17. 14 or 15. And in total, I've probably lost about 10,000 pounds over the course of seven, eight years. $600. Get grand fucking gambling. wrecked. Years, I think. Three or four thousand, I'd say. All I had was a Steam account. Very late. And that was it. I was ready. Um, it was mainly through content creators. Gambling by a third party was promised as you had better odds. Was all I really cared about at that age. You would sign by Steam. Um, yeah, there was no verification. When you are that young, you get a little bit money every month from your parents. So eventually I bought a knife. That's when it started. When you gamble, you want to win it back. That's what happened for me. I wanted to win back the money that I lost. So I kept going. Yeah, I started around 15. On those websites, it took me 30 seconds to log in. That's right, man. The only people that lose money gambling are the people that quit too early, right, guys? Hell yeah. In you generation with the two, I spent 10k on CSGO. Bruh. Should have given it to me instead. Oh, use my promo code for an extra 5% or whatever. Use this for a free £3 credit. It all just makes you want to gamble more and more and more. It's just a cycle of just trapping you in. Uh, Alright, so, um, <clears throat> can you, like, please explain like I'm fine? Because in our world, in Counter-Strike, is very normalized. And I would like to hear from someone who knows what he's talking about. Um, what's the reason we forbid gambling to underage players? Meet Joel Bilio. He does a lot of things. He's a professor of clinical psychology and psychopathology at the University of Lausanne in Switzerland. He's he ain't a real person. Also a researcher at the Center for Excessive Gambling in the same city. And for the last 10 years, he has been involved as an expert with the World Health Organization on public don't believe him. Public health implications. Glowies, bro. Of online addictive behaviors. He does even more than that, but this is what brings him here today. Children and adolescents are vulnerable for several reasons. For example, they are less efficient in self-control. So in. Yeah, but they can probably chop their cock off, right? 
actively regulating their behaviors, increased difficulties in emotion regulations, meaning that they can experience emotion um, in a very uh, intense manner, and it also compromises their self-control over their behaviors. And this can be uh, relatively simply explained by several factors, but especially the fact that the brain is not maturated at those age. And so, so another factor that promote risky behaviors among young people is the influence of role model. And typically, streamers, uh, people doing esports high level, are role model for these young people and these adolescents. So it's a clear problem if these people are involved in gambling, in opening cases, uh, because it will promote this behavior in, in, in these young people and these adolescents. So I am clearly convinced that there is a responsibility from the gaming community to not uh, show this behavior and promote this behavior in young people. If you grow up uh, in the gaming world like I showed you and then uh, you have this normalized uh, promotion for gambling and you can even access it when you are young, so what kind of effect can we expect for, for the young ones? If you are exposed to gambling through advertisement, through your family, through your gaming practice, a risk factor for developing problematic uh, gaming patterns and even gambling disorder. So starting younger increase the risk of developing uh, a real gambling disorder or a gambling addiction. So this is basically one of the reasons why in many jurisdictions advertisement for gambling is prohibited. Uh, the same way that it's, it's done for alcohol or cigarettes. That made me realize, when was the last time you have seen an ad for slot machines or roulette on TV? Advertisement of gambling and online gambling is under a lot of scrutiny, especially lately, and some countries have it totally banned. As a matter of fact, football is now at the center of this, and some things are changing here as well. As an example, in the Netherlands, gambling sponsorships won't be allowed to appear on camera starting in two years. And meanwhile, in the Counter-Strike world, we find G2 releasing a news saying that CSGO Roll is a community skin trading and social gaming platform, with a comment from their CEO adding that they are excited to enable G2 fans to get a chance to earn rare skins they always dream of. Such a deceptive word. But in reality, this is like saying you are excited to enable G2 fans to gamble. As if I was sponsored by a casino and I would say that I'm happy to give a chance to my viewers to earn a house. Yeah, that might What's be What's wrong with that? True for the 0.01% that will hit big, but what about the 99.99 .99 others? Have you all lost your mind, or is it me that lost touch of reality? Clearly. Dude, separating an idiot from their money is the oldest form of business on planet Earth, aside from prostitution. If they don't blow it gambling, they'll spend it on something else fucking stupid. It doesn't matter. These type of people will waste their money regardless, so you might as well be the one to take it. They function as slot machines, basically. Um, in addition to all the aspects related to sound, music, and stuff, which put a similar environment that what you can find in slot machine, the way they are designed is clearly similar. A typical example is the near misses. Basically, the symbol will uh, defile in front of you, and you will see a lot of potentially very rare or epic uh, skins, uh, like uh, like knife. A reel stopped just after these very rare items. It makes the people think as if they were very near to obtain them. We can open one more case. Let's do this one. I'm probably gonna get some crap thing. Oh my god. <gasps> oh my god! Oh my god! No! No! <laughs> Those near misses are interpreted Bruh. by the brain as if. The dog. That is a very common reaction. It is a win. Yes, <laughs> they are associated with feeling of frustration, anger, negative emotions, and they tend to promote their impulsive <laughs> people impulsively play again. For near miss being efficient, you need a certain amount of them. Dude, if that shit happened to me, the last thing I'd want to fucking do is spend that shit again. Because if I was that close and didn't get it, then I definitely ain't getting it next time around 30 to perhaps a bit more. So uh, it's an additional element here that is used to promote impulsive uh, gambling and loss of control, basically. There are also other strategies that are used, like uh, loyalty program or daily cases. Huh? You can have these cases uh, for free uh, each day, which uh, mean that you will come and connect every day for, for having those. During my research, I've come across some rather funny stuff. There is a uh, P-Hub video where before they uh... Well, you know, they, they get inside each other. You have an ad for one of these websites. Mind you, I'm gonna have to blur everything because it's, uh, you know. Before start of this video, I want to recommend you site fourth deposit from 1,000. Two seconds later. But I thought it was funny. I've also found some content creators from Valorant who could stream some Valorant tournament games, and in between you find them advertising CSGO websites, even though they don't play CSGO, or at least they don't do it on stream. What wasn't funny, however, is to find what seems to be a 14 years old uh, King Samuel with the two, the WHO and WEF can take a flying funk into a jet engine. Hmm. I mean, yeah, I wouldn't mind that. Either that or into a, uh, I'm trying to think, what would be more painful, the jet engine or a fucking propeller? Either or. I guess it wouldn't really matter at that point. You'd be grinded up into a pulp anyway.
All the streamers sponsored by Keydrop. Keydrop is currently the one on top of my list with the most traffic and with a young kid promoting them on Twitch, I would argue that it seems like their marketing practices are somewhat questionable. We are looking at a 14 years old streamer advertising what seems to be a gambling website in front of a live audience with a promo code as well as banners that look very very similar to the one that other streamers are using when you endorse them. What kind of message is being sent there? That any kid watching him is also welcome? One might think that, allegedly, this is why you could have the most traffic. And even more, he didn't just have one of these websites, he had four. And they are all on that list, without any form of regulation, what else can you expect? Actually, I had a segment there uh, where I showed you how some YouTubers promote it and why it's a very bad practice, but I've decided to remove it entirely because I'm afraid this would turn into a witch hunt. Instead, have a look at some clues coming from the UK Gambling Commission. There's a lot more, but here's a few. You cannot feature anyone gambling or playing a significant role in the ad if they are under 25 years old. If you're going to promote the website and you are less than 25, you cannot appear in the ad, so you cannot talk in the ad, and surely you cannot show yourself gambling during the ad. And there's many more rules. You cannot portray risky behaviors, so when you go, haha, I'm going to gen XD lot moment, that would not be allowed either. And also, you cannot associate with youth culture. Some websites are running events. This one did a back to school event. I don't think I need to add anything to that. Kind of speaks for itself. Recently, Twiston, a 19 years old pro player from Valorant, took his own life. The next day, as we had a CSGO tournament, the players held a minute of silence in honor of Twiston. And you will find clips of that on YouTube. So some guy took that clip, plugged his own gambling sponsor, and uploaded the thing on YouTube. This is unedited footage. CSGO Roll. The coolest drop is only here. Try it now. Use code to get 5% bonus and free cases every day. Watching along at home as we pay our respects to Twiston, who tragically passed away this week. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, that is fucking great. Oh my god, bruh. That's fucking hilarious. Now, let's recap everything we have learned. In Counter-Strike, 80% of the creators great, are promoting dude. unregulated gambling websites. Pro players and esports organizations are promoting them as well, <laughs> and even Faceit yeah. promoted some of these with a push-up that you cannot miss. It is advertised to everyone and portrayed as something fun, in total disregard of every gambling advertisement rule that exists. Twitch clearly says it is against their TOS, but does nothing. YouTube clearly says it is against their TOS, but does nothing, except when I talk about it saying that you shouldn't gamble, and Steam clearly says it is against their TOS, but does nothing either. The websites do not comply to any form of regulation that would be standard in every country, and by being unregulated, they are accessible to everyone including the dude that's why uh steve will do it got banned from youtube as he pr promoted the website stake and ones which is convenient because they are also he showed the uh full fucking uh url in like his description and in the videos so they fucking took him down advertised to them it has been going on for pretty gay years and no one cares hey welcome to counter-strike i can't wait for cs2 so whose fault is it and who should we be mad at well the parents there we go. End the video. It's the parents' problem. Not mine, not yours, not anyone else's. Just the parents. Logan Paul's most profitable scam yet? How is Prime a scam? How the fuck can you even scam with a drink, bro? Oh. Is it like an empty bottle? This guy has no idea. Logan Paul, you're trying to make your drink the most popular rehydration drink in the world. So these guys have signed by Munich. They're the official rehydration partner of the UFC. They don't even understand hydration. This is crazy. In only a few minutes, I'm going to teach you all the things that people like Logan Paul and Casey. It's water, bro. <laughs> I got some water right here, man, with some G Fuel in it. You know what happens when you drink water? You get rehydrated. It's just flavored fucking water with vitamins and bullshit in it, dude. Like, that's literally the definition of hydration, but, you know. This I don't want you to know about when it comes to hydration. These happen to be the two worst flavors. See that? Proper hydration drinks. This is $10. This is okay. $10? Yeah. Can you, can you tell me how much that is one more time? $10. $10. <laughs> $10. That's five pounds. If you British people. I'm grateful that it's $10 because that, that helps me prove. Ten. That was $20. Best be careful handling them. See the way you warn me. This is $10. This is okay. That guy should have been wearing a black and white stripey jumper and an eye mask because he's rubbing us. So what I've got here are three of the most popular hydration beverages. Yeah, don't Primes like resell in the fucking UK because they're super fucking popular? Now, if you recall to earlier on what Logan Paul said in this video, he was virtually signaling about the sugar content. This 20 ounce bottle of Gatorade has 34 grams of sugar. One bottle of Prime has two grams of sugar. That's 17 times the amount of sugar. Now, before I get into which one I... That is true. I think it's superior. Let's go for a quick lesson in hydration and dehydration. So depending on which sport you do, which duration and what elements you're in, there's going to be a different amount of dehydrating that occurs. So if you're playing rugby sevens in the summer, or whether or not you're playing football, maybe you're doing summer. a workout, whatever it is, there's going to be an element of sweating. Now, typical bodybuilder workouts don't elicit tremendous amounts of sweat. So if you're going to do 15 sets of bodybuilding exercise, an electrolyte beverage isn't an essential. But if you're going to do something of a longer duration, if you don't want to see a performance taper off, kind of is. I'll explain why. Fat loss gurus over the years have said to people that when you sweat, it's your fat crying. It's not. It's your body trying to regulate its temperature, and you will lose water. But it's not just water that you're losing. We also lose salt. Yeah, that you piss out fat. 
That's why, have you ever noticed that on a hot and sticky day, your dog just can't resist licking you? They're licking that salt, they're enjoying it. Do you notice that? And also, we've got those mates that sweat and they wear the baseball caps that they really should have given up like a year. Yeah, I've heard Prime is like super fucking sweet, so I've never tried it because I don't really like super sweet shit. Like, literally, I bought this 45 ounce shaker cup because one scoop of G Fuel is way too fucking strong in like the 12 ounces of water that they recommend it. So I literally got a shaker cup four times the size of a normal fucking G Fuel cup in order to dilute the flavor as much as I can because I do not like overly fucking sweet or flavored drinks personally. A year ago, and you start to see like the French Alps on the side. That's the salt from their sweat drying up and crustificationing. New word on the hat. If you're partaking in a sport, especially something like Brazilian Jiu Jitsu that I do, where we lose loads of water and loads of salt, if you replenish with just water, over time you're going to create a negative balance of sodium, which is an electrolyte. And electrolytes are very important to maintain optimal performance. Could have gone for a science lesson there, but I didn't. Now, there are other electrolytes potassium and calcium, magnesium. I put et al. You're not supposed to put et al. That means and others, as in other authors or people, you'd say, etc. if you're talking about things that aren't people, but I just like the way it looks. The reason I made these electrolytes small is although we do lose them in periods of sweat and through exercise, we don't lose them nearly half as much as we do water and salt. These are the two main ones that we want to prioritize when we're looking to replenish things we're losing in intense bouts of exercise. So let's go back to the bottles for a second. If we look here at the breakdown on the back, we can see the amount of sodium, which is salt, being just five milligrams. Then if we look over here at Powerade, we can see sodium at 168 milligrams. So this one's got a lot more sodium, which is one of the key players we need to keep an eye on in hydration. Now potassium here, 700 milligrams. If we look up here, 200 milligrams. Very simply, we can see the prime is low in sodium, high in potassium, and Powerade is high in sodium, and low in potassium. So understanding that when we sweat, we lose mostly water and salt, which one of these two do you think is gonna be superior to when it comes to replenishing the sodium that you're losing, not prime? Okay, hold that, you're gonna try first sip. The next thing this brings But does Prime have iodine in it? Because that also is an electrolyte. To be honest is the amount of sugar that's in these. So if we look at the amount of sugar that's in Prime, two grams of sugar. And when we look at the amount of sugar that we've got in Powerade, 35 grams of sugar, which is equivalent to about six teaspoons. So that makes Powerade worse because it's got way more sugar. Incorrect. You might be hearing rain. That could be rain outside or it could be Logan Paul's PR team with a sprinkler outside trying to silence me. Because what you're about to learn changes everything. When it comes to replenishing water and salt, there is one thing that is used to speed up the process. Glucose is a very big player in speeding up the process of getting these electrolytes into the bloodstream. When it comes to rapid rehydration, which would be your preference if you're in a sporting environment, glucose would be a good thing. But what if you're in a calorie controlled diet or you don't want to get excess calories in through your hydration beverage? Well, then you would pick a sugar-free alternative like what Gatorade do. This way you get the electrolytes and no sugar, which puts it in more to a comparison with Prime. But then again, if we also check sodium, 336 milligrams, potassium, 72 milligrams. Gatorade also understand the electrolytes which are important for sport performance and go high with sodium, low with potassium. So looking at the key players in the hydration market, if you want the best hydration, you're probably gonna be looking here. And if you wanted the best hydration without calories or getting any of it in through sugar, you would look over here. So what exactly is Prime good for? Not a lot. Now I know what you're thinking. Why listen to me? James, you're just a personal trainer, counts reps for a living. So I called up my friend Jordan Sullivan, who's also known as the fight dietitian, who's a world expert in dehydration and rehydration, seeing as he prepares world champions in the UFC for a living. This is what he had to say. When you sweat, you lose fluid from your skin. But where does the fluid come from? Well, it's actually coming from your blood. So the blood is important when we talk about rehydration. When we drink fluids, it doesn't just fall straight from our mouth into our blood. It has to go into our stomach, into our small intestine, and then cross a wall to get into the blood. Crossing that wall is where the problem lies. That wall has a couple of entry points where water can get in. If water goes across by itself, it's slow as all fuck. However, if you can put the right amount of sodium with the right amount of glucose in there, you have just made that drink a VIP. But the way that Prime is formulated, you're going the opposite way of getting in. That's why these comparisons that Prime do with other drinks are so ridiculous. Every drink that they compare themselves with actually have way better hydrating or sports drink properties than what they do that's why doctors hook pay yeah i still wouldn't want to drink a bunch of fucking sugar bro it's up to bags of IV fluids that are made of water, sodium, and glucose, and all good sports drinks have these ingredients in them because it works exceptionally well. I'm yet to see a doctor prescribe a bag of coconut water, bananas, or anything else with high potassium for someone with dehydration. So in short, hydration is a very interesting term for these guys to use, and it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. If performing well and being hydrated is important to you, I actually wouldn't pick any of these. You could get away with taking some water, putting a sprinkle of salt and cordial in it, and you would get the majority of the benefits for a fraction of the price. 10 Australian dollars and five pounds for something that hasn't even got the right electrolytes or the right mixtures to call it a legitimate hydration beverage is a ripoff. And these aren't that well priced either. Because I train Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and I sweat a lot as a person and performance is important to me before every session i get electrolyte powder and i mix it with water i get to save myself a fucking fortune from buying these overpriced drinks and i get the exact concoction that i want better yet i can determine how strong i want that electrolyte powder depending on how long the duration of my session is or how dehydrated i'm feeling at the time and if you're someone that trains most days although you're only saving a few dollars that adds up and across the month of the year that probably equates to buying a new pair of lifting shoes or buying a gym program off a trainer online and better yet there are solutions out there formulated by people who one know what they're doing and two have a brain when it comes to hydration Unless you're someone that's into wasting their money when it comes to improving their performance. The only two things that I Isn't Prime like literally a fucking copy of Body Armor? And I'm pretty sure Body Armor... I think it is like literally the exact same thing, right? Didn't the guy like who made Body Armor threaten to sue them over Prime? Because Logan was like uh, sponsored by Body Armor for a while... And then he literally was like, yeah, let's clone this fucking product and sell it as our own or some shit like that.
I deem important on a daily basis to get in are electrolytes and creatine. So hopefully by now you understand why a decent electrolyte is gonna be one of the perfect things to accompany you every day when you train. The only other thing that I mix into this solution is creatine. And if you wanna understand why every single person has a brain when it comes to training and nutrition ensures that they have creatine every single day and the benefits they can help you, then you're gonna to need to watch this video here that I made for you so you can understand why these- Dude, I'm drinking creatine right now. What the fuck? So there you guys go. Put a sprinkle of salt in your prime. And then you can skip all the fucking nasty ass sugar. Dude, I don't know. I have to cut. Like, whenever I drank Gatorade, I had to cut that shit with water because that shit was gross, dude. Gatorade is like drinking syrup. That shit is so fucking sweet, dude. It's like, ugh. I absolutely fucking hate Gatorade. Like, how people can drink that shit straight from a bottle, I don't know. That stuff has always made me want to fucking gag whenever I've had to drink Gatorade. It's like, ugh, dude. I can manage Powerade, but even then, I'll do, like, you know, 30% Powerade, 70% water. I'm just not, like, a super sweet person. See, I, with the two, the British can't even say intestines, right? Pretty much. A boner. I have a boner, too. Philly falls in love again? Dude, that is gross. She is ugly. Hi. Oh, wow, you are stunning. Well, to never loss on my... No, she is not. Oh, you are so pretty. Thank you. Pretty. Sierra Leone and Irish. No oh way. Oh my God. That's all you. Oh. That's all you. Big yeah. up, you're Harry's country. Lovely to meet you. Lovely to meet you. Too. Good luck, take care. Thank you. You are stunning, wow. And you smell good. And you dress nice. <laughs> and you have nice skin. And I like the arm tat. And I like your bracelet. Yeah, the arm tats now. She's a gross looking dude. I just like you. <laughs> Hi. Oh wow, you are stunning. Ugh, those fucking lip fillers, dude. Ugh. The lip fillers with the glossy lip gloss. Um, no. Hell no, nah, bro. Hell no. Nah. Enjoy a refreshing Madison beer. Is that the new Bud Light, guys? What do you do if his son's gay? Well, we know what Wings would do, right? If my kids grow up to be gay, I'm beating the shit out of them. But look here, <laughs> there, there's two choices in life. Wings. You pretend you're straight or I beat you to death. Let's see if Top G is as based as Wings. What would you do if your son was gay? I get asked that question a lot. I would not disown my child if he was gay. I, uh oh. I don't care, yeah. right? I would not allow my child to be a degenerate person. Yeah. If he was gay in his own privacy, in his own private time, I wouldn't care. If he was a gay rights activist and he was walking around in bondage gear on a gay pride parade in public, then I would disown him. Not because he's gay, but because he's degenerate as a person. I don't like degeneracy. I think degeneracy is repulsive. I don't know, man. Maybe Wings is the new top G. If my kids grow up to be gay, I'm beating the shit out of them. But look <laughs> here. There, there's two choices in life. Wings. You pretend you're straight or I beat you to death. <laughs> Yo, who's more based, guys? Is it top G or Wings? Or is Wings the new fucking top G? If my kids grow up to be gay, I'm beating the shit out of them. But look <laughs> here, there, there's two choices in life. Wings. You pretend you're straight or I beat you to death. Brooke Monk says Sam Dez does what? Who the fuck cares? Italian woman speaking Chinese or Japanese, not Chinese. Do wait, best NBA glow-ups? Andrew Tate reacts to his imposter. Choose your aesthetic. That looks fucking cringe. The soft girl. The baddie. Oh, hold on. Let's see what this dog shit is. <laughs> the baddie. Form-fitting silhouettes. Dark and neutral palette. Spicy styles. The street walker, more like it. The soft girl, oh my god, bro, she looks like she watches anime. Dude, 
just don't even talk to this shit. <laughs> what the fuck is that shit? Bruh. What the fuck is that? That's just the straight up hoe. Yeah, I'm wearing a bra. Look at my tits. Oh my god. Dog, these bitches have no shame these days. It's sad. There's no shame these days anymore. Has Dreamcast guy made a video on gaming? We need to watch some gaming shit, bro. Oh, let's watch this. What up, gamers? Dreamcast guy here, talking today about Red Dead Redemption on the PlayStation 4 and the PlayStation 5, and this is also coming to the Nintendo Switch. Now, I have to say, dude, I'm gonna buy this on the Switch. I saw over the five next to tat. Wait, fuck, I cannot read. Next tattoo is Majin Vegeta next week. Thoughts, Griffin, and everyone. I don't know who Majin Vegeta is, but if you like him, man, that's all that matters. This right up front. Because it's going on your body at the end of the day. Everybody assumed that if we ever got Red Dead Redemption to come back, it would be a remaster or a remake. That's I didn't. Not what this is. What we have here is an incredibly overpriced port. This is the exact same game with less features, and in some places, the graphics actually look worse. But let's discuss. Hope you're having a great day. If you could like this video and subscribe if you haven't already, uh, I'll make you a deal. If this, game, if this video somehow gets like 5,000 likes, I'll give away a copy of this game over... It did not. We're on Twitter because nobody needs to be spending this amount of cash on it. Now, I'm going to buy this shit on the Switch, man. What is Red Dead Redemption? If you haven't played it or you're somebody that kind of got into gaming in the last couple years, I'm sure you've probably heard of it. This is essentially a Wild West simulator. You're playing as this guy named John Marsden who's trying to hunt down a bunch of people from an old crew he used to run in. The story, the environment, the voice acting of this game is just so incredibly good, but that's part of why everybody was hoping for a remake or a remake. No, I don't want a remake. If they would have upped the uh, texture quality a little bit, that would have been nice, but... I don't want them remaking this game. Leave it as is. Master or it was actually fun, unlike Red Dead 2. Thing ...to make this feel a bit more modern. Now, I played this game when it initially came out. Uh, I thought it was great back then, but the controls, the UI, some of this stuff is a bit clunky now, and they really did nothing to improve it. In fact, as I'm sure you can probably notice, a lot of this stuff looks downright weird. The menus are still 720p. They're <gasps> oh my god. The menu actually downright blurry, which is just baffling. Like how did they not upscale this or redraw it? Like what's the purpose of that? I saw there with the 5 chat hates me if you still have my IG. That's the tattoo that's next if you can show it on screen. Yeah, I can pull it up real quick. It auto fills your uh, Instagram name. Okay, I see it now. Got it. Is it going on your hand or is that just like a uh, sample or whatever? Yeah, it looks pretty good, man. A lot of times, graffiti or writing on the walls is also blurry. Even stuff like John Marsden's character model, you would expect, okay, even on a lot of these like very lazy slapdash remasters, they remake the main character so they look better. You know, you're going to see them the most, make sure their clothes look cool, improve their shadows. If they've got scars on their face like John does, you make those look a lot cooler. This game looks so bad. Like, 
John's clothes actually look like they're running below 1080p. Now, this game technically says it's... A I hate when my clothes look like they're running at under 1080p, bro. Don't you guys hate it when you walk into a store, you see a fresh new fucking shirt, and you're like, oh, damn, they don't have it in my size. So you order it online, it shows up at your fucking house, you open it up, and you're like, fuck! It's only in 720p. I wanted the 1080p version, but you have to wear it anyway. God, I fucking hate that shit. So awful, man. Ugh. Happens all the fucking time. Donald is in jail, <laughs> Trump, with the two. You need gaming? Can you do that new Black Myth game? The fuck is that? <laughs> Can I do that new Black Myth game? What the fuck is the Black Myth game? I have no idea, bro. Upscaled to 4K? I don't have any idea what that's supposed to mean because 4K 720 assets don't do anything. Like, why would you upscale a game that isn't going to look better? Now, the shadows and stuff, a lot of this game, you felt like maybe they'll redo the lighting engine. Nope. This is the same lighting engine as far as I can tell, which at times is overly crisp. When you see like shadows scattered across the ground from leaves or trees, or you're just trying to traverse at night and there's some moonlight on you, this has such a weird, overly blown out look to it. It's just the way that a lot of games looked back in 2010. And back then, we didn't really notice. That's just how games looked, so we kind of put up with it. But I expect that they would do something to make this look a little bit more smoothed, round. Looks fine to me. Out the edges of some of those shadows so they don't look so obviously cut and paste asset-wise. This game is just so bare bones, but they also remove stuff. I have the original versions of Red Dead Redemption and Red Dead Redemption's DLC, which is called Undead Nightmare. Both of these are actually in this repackaged version of the game, but it's missing the online play. This has a giant... Yeah, because they want you to go play Red Dead Online and spend real money. ...online mode that's still alive today called Red Dead Online, where you and your buddies can ride around on horses and rob stagecoaches. And it wasn't like the deepest, most groundbreaking thing, but at least it was an option. It was extra content that now is just gone. I guess I'm shocked that they decided to make this a worse version of a game that people already liked. But you know what my biggest complaint is? The fact that this is hard locked at 30 frames a second. Now, I do know there's been some discourse of, oh, 60 frames a second doesn't look that much better if your TV can handle 40 frames a second or if you are able to bump stuff up to 100. No, it's the spaghetti code behind this game, man. I'm telling you. This game has been notorious for having one of the worst development cycles in the industry. And that's why they never had a PC port, is they literally could not get this shit to run outside of the PS3 and 360 version, which is why the 360 version is getting ported to PlayStation and the Nintendo Switch. Donald is in jail. Trump with the two. The Monkey Souls game has new... Ga oh! The Chinese Monkey game? Oh, God. Bro, that game looks like trash. I mean, I guess I can pull it up. 120 frames a second, it's not really that big of a difference. To me personally, 60 frames a second should be the bare minimum whenever possible. Just the more I play games at over 60 FPS, the more I actually appreciate how smooth it makes the experience, how much better it makes aiming, how much your reaction speed is improved when you're getting more data to your eyeballs. This is hard locked at 30 frames a second. Even on the PlayStation 4, or in this case, the PlayStation 5, which is what I'm playing it on, this looks choppy, especially in some of these cutscenes. It's super weird that they decided to just not even figure out how to bump this up. There are hackers that have made free patches to play this game at 60 FPS. The game works at 60 FPS. It's not like it just suddenly freaking explodes and there's just horses on fire they're literally doing 
the bare minimum and charging you 50 bucks. Yeah, and they're going to make millions of dollars at it. What happened to that Dreamcast guy? What happened to that fucking GTA trilogy remake? You gave a 10 out of 10 or whatever, saying it was the perfect example of a remaster. This is better than that. So where's that same energy, my guy? I don't know. Keep that same energy. That's probably my biggest gripe about this is that, you know what, if you were charging 20 bucks and you said, hey, we're working on other stuff, most of our budget and time and developers are focusing on GTA 6 because this is Rockstar Games, I feel like people go, okay, we appreciate a way to play Red Dead Redemption on our current day systems. It's cool to play it on a handheld if you get this on Switch, but my issue is that this is 50 bucks. And it's not even going to get a physical edition here for a couple months. So even if you are a collector, it's not like you can pick this up at GameStop today. It's just the... Oh, my God. Damn it. I already had a place on my shelf picked out for it. Your fact that Rockstar Games decided to take one of their best games ever, a true classic that they crafted with passion and love, and they turned it into one of the laziest ports I've ever seen and then slapped the biggest price tag that they thought they could get away with it for. Like it doesn't have. Yeah. That's what every company does. They charge as much for something as they possibly can while not making people not want to buy it. That's literally what every fucking company does in any industry. My guy. Haptic trigger support. It doesn't have any extra cool rumble feature stuff. Really? Like this is such a bare minimum port and it's not even coming to Xbox. Like, that's the other weird part is that if you want to play this on Xbox, you have to buy the Xbox 360 disc, put it into your console, and play it versus backwards compatibility. That's the only way to play this game right now. Or if it's not coming to Steam either, so people can't even, like, mod it to get 60 FPS. Rockstar Games seems to not like Red Dead Redemption. And I guess that's part of what's just so baffling about this is that you might as well play Red Dead Redemption 2. This is Red Dead Redemption 2 gameplay I recorded yesterday on my PlayStation 5 because... Red Dead 1 is so much better than 2. It just looks so good. If your options are that for much cheaper or $50 for the crappiest port I've seen in years... Why in the world would you pick the port? Rockstar Games put stuff on sale pretty quick. I implore you. I've talked about this in the past. Vote with your wallet. That means buying the stuff that we support. Spending money to actually show the developers, show the executives in suits what we want more of. Buying this shows them that it's totally fair, it's totally allowed. I'm gonna get this shit on the Switch. To make a lazy port. I bought it to do a review, and even then I feel like I kind of got scammed. I mean, to be quite honest. <sighs> so he bought it knowing exactly what it is and is saying don't buy it to put your money where your fucking mouth is. Keep that same energy. Yeah. Disappointing. I he did the exact same thing with The Last of Us 1 remake too, which is funny. Zero four alpha charm with the two. Wait, why? Oh, there we go. Haptic trigger. He thought that. I know, man. Those haptic triggers really make a huge difference during gameplay. I like Undead Nightmare. I'm glad this game is here in some form, but for this price, for this quality, they don't care about the fans at all. And it makes me a bit worried about GTA 6, to be quite honest. But what do you guys think about Red Dead Redemption? Tell me your thoughts in the comments down below, and if you enjoyed... Yeah, the only game Dreamcast guy has ever actually boycotted was Hog Snort's Begacy, because he dated a trans woman. This video, please give it a big old thumbs up, share with your friends, and subscribe. At least we can say the Dreamcast guy... Respect trans kids, affirm trans rights, stand with Ukraine, Black Lives Matter, trans visibility is valid. If you haven't already, and please keep dreaming. My God, I can't believe this is... What what a massive freaking disappointment. Years of rumors of a remaster, and we get this wet turd dropped into a Dixie cup. Either either, either subscribe, Thanks donate, so much for watching or get that the video. fuck out. If you want to see something else, you can always click this link to see...
I love Bomb Rush Cyber. What the fuck is that? Yeah, I don't really care what he loves. Oski Woski with a 13 months. So what Dreamcast guy is telling me is do I want a good looking game that's not fun, Red Dead Redemption 2, or do I want a game that looks bad but actually fun, Red Dead Redemption 1? You know my answer. But that's the thing is Red Dead 1 doesn't even look bad. It's aged incredibly fucking well, in my opinion, but I don't know why people are saying it looks bad. I think it looks fine. Oh, look, dude, it's the yoga instructor that totally doesn't have an OnlyFans. Remember her? Dude, I'm telling you, YouTube is, like, trying to bait people into going to these bitches' OnlyFans. It's fucking sad. All of these social media platforms are literally just fucking funnels for OnlyFans hoes. Timothy Marco with a two. Bomb Rush is a spiritual successor to Jet Set. Okay, that makes sense why he likes it. When your friend has never experienced a healthy relationship. Oh my god, bro. I'm 14 and I can totally relate to that video. Oh, I guess this is the uh, gameplay you're talking about. The Monkey Man. Since Black Myth Wukong released... <laughs> Why did he say it like that? Since Black Myth Wukong released... Since Black Myth Wukong... It's first... Just say Wukong. Since Black Myth Wukong. Like, why did he pronounce it like that, bruh? Damn. You aren't Chinese, my guy. Trailer three years ago. Every year on August 20th, the developer Game Science has shown something new about the development progress of the game. However, what's different this year is that we finally got to play it. Dude, this footage is at 1080p and it's fucking blurry. Get a better capture card, IGN. My 45 minute demo provided three boss fights and a relatively complete chapter experience. It's worth noting that after the event, the dev team made some adjustments to the trial version based on the feedback and suggestions received during the closed door evaluation that I participated in. As a result, my experience may differ slightly from what others experienced in Hangzhou and at Gamescom in Cologne. Zhongzhou? Due to time limitations, this trial version did not include the level up system. However, it provided <laughs> players with a set of skills and equipment that will be obtained in the mid game of the final version. In addition to basic light and heavy attacks, the protagonist's attack stances can be switched between three different postures, including smash form, pillar form, and thrust form at any time. Furthermore, spells such as Immobilize, Stone Solid, Ring of Fire, and The Pluck of Many are also available for use. There are also two transformation abilities. One turns you into the previously seen Fireblade Wolf, and the other results in a creature with poisonous attacks. Additionally, players will find and collect certain potions for in-game use. It's important to note that these configurations may vary slightly depending on the different stages. The first boss is named Centipede Gwai, and it appeared in the first 13 minute game. That rolls off the tongue, man. Centipede Gwai. Gameplay trailer released in 2020. This time, it awaits players in a horrible cave. Its attack methods include rolling and heavy punches, as well as the ability to release poisonous gas. This gas inflicts a slow acting poison effect on the protagonist, causing gradual health loss, which can only be cured by consuming antidote potions. However, this boss is considered relatively easy overall in terms of difficulty for this trial version. After becoming familiar with its attack patterns, most players should be able to defeat it easily. The second boss is the Macaque Chief, as seen in the snow mountain of the 20... <laughs> Not Macaque. No, we have to kill Macaque. I can't wait to beat the shit out of Macaque. Oh my god. <laughs> Suck Macaque Chief. I don't know, man. 
Oh my god. The second boss is the macaque chief. <laughs> the second boss is the macaque chief. That's right, chief. Macaque is the second boss. Where'd the audio go? What the fuck? What the fuck is this thing doing? Oh my god, bro. YouTube is busted right now. Since Black Myth Wukong released its first trailer. Since Black Myth Wukong. Where were we right here? The second boss is the Macaque Chief, as seen in the Snow Mountain of the 2021 trailer. This time, players can experience the sequence just as it was shown. You can observe how the protagonist's movements and combat in the snow-covered terrain dynamically affect the accumulation of snow in real time. This battle also holds a secret. If the Macaque Chief's health is reduced to half within a certain time, it triggers his second phase. To encounter the monkey with wings, the protagonist needs to venture deeper into the scene. In this state, the monkey's aggression, attack range, and attack patterns all increase significantly. It gains the ability to launch aerial assaults against the player, making for a thrilling and intense encounter. The third boss is the Tiger Vanguard, who appeared in the 2022 trailer. This time, the Tiger Vanguard awaits players' challenges in a blood pool Dude, in a temple. Dude, is that the fucker from Frosted Flakes? According to the developers, this boss will... Macaque. They're great. ...play a role in the storyline as an NPC who imparts the stone-solid skill to the protagonist. Therefore, you will witness him using this skill during the battle. One highlight of this scene is how the water reacts and changes dynamically with the actions in combat. The Tiger Vanguard boasts the highest attack speed and aggression among the three bosses. Not only does he possess both physical and spell-based attack abilities, but his combo attacks also deal substantial damage, making it easy to fall victim to his assault. The chapter experience provided during the Hangzhou event that I played the game at is called Purple Cloud Mountain. The overall scenery is somewhat reminiscent of the in-game footage shown in the 2022 trailer. This is a relatively complete level experience, featuring various environments such as forests, villages, and temples. There are also as many as four or five types of enemies waiting for players along the way. Don't underestimate these minions as they also possess the ability to deliver a fatal blow to the protagonist with a single strike. There's also How a detour fun. path in the level. That sounds fun, dude. Well, that players might not easily find where they can encounter a hidden boss, the Poisonous King. This creature has the appearance of a scorpion-like monster. After engaging in conversation with it, players need to break the wine barrel beside it to start the battle. This hidden boss presents the highest level of difficulty in this trial version. It possesses extremely fast attacks, deals heavy damage, and boasts skills that inflict po not nigh with the two, this game is giving Sekiro vibes for some reason. Well, I mean, it's a Souls clone, and it's set in, like, an Asian kind of setting, so makes sense. Poison on the player. It took me nearly an hour of fighting to defeat it, and there were several instances where I succumbed to poison before being able to use the cure potion in time. And while Black Myth shares some similarities in its mechanics with the Dark Souls series, the combat feel here is quite distinct from any other similar games. In my opinion, this distinction arises from the fact that, in other Souls-like games, players typically wielded weapons like swords or axes, with the grip at the weapon's end during combat. However, in Black Myth Wukong, the main weapon is a staff. In Black Myth, pause, Wukong... Why not just say Black Myth Wukong? Why do you need to take that, like, audible pause and say Black Myth Wukong? Like, it's just the way he says that is so irritating, bro. It's, like, really nitpicky, I know, but it's really pissing me off. Timothy Marco with the two, we've yet to see the optimization of the game. Uh, this game, I think, is just another Chinese asset flip. I doubt it'll be good. Shadow Band Gang with the two. Man sounds like he has a pocket rocket to his... Yeah, I don't know, man. 
primarily held in the middle. The grip on the staff changes according to different moves, creating a varied rhythm and action, even changing the length of the staff. It sounds like he has a CCP party official behind him, you know, making sure he behaves. Combat. The impact feedback from the staff striking enemies is quite distinctive as well. Coupled with the support from the spell system during combat, Black Myth Wukong stands apart as an action RPG with a unique feel, differentiating itself from other ARPG and action games that have come before. Ultimately, despite developer Game Science providing a substantial amount of gameplay content in this trial version, there are still numerous questions waiting to be answered. For example, whether the protagonist possesses any other weapons, how the level up system works and what the skill tree looks like, and how many transformations and spells are available. All of these questions can only be answered once the game is finally released. Speaking of which, Black Myth Wukong is currently scheduled for release in the summer of 2024 for both PC and next generation console platforms. For more on your favorite games, keep it right here on IGN. Oh my god, bro, they didn't say PlayStation or Xbox. That means they're just talking about PlayStation, which means they hate the Xbox. Dude, I'm gonna make a Twitter post about that shit. Sorry, guys. What did IGN give this? I'm just curious. Accessor oh, that not just... Yeah, I had a feeling. All right. That's all I need to watch in an IGN review. <laughs> it's the number... Anything else we should check out? Oh, we should watch the DSP stuff. This shit's wild. Uh, hold on, let me check my sub feed real quick. Give me a second, because I saw those videos in my sub feed today. Let's see. I think it was Aqua Teal that had it, right? Maybe. Let's see. Uh, actually, it was Memologies. This was a... Um, a membership or a gifted membership. All right? So, right now, we're at 482 members. Yes, once again. We dipped below 500. This is like the seventh time in the last week. I'm not kidding you. We keep having people say, wow, this is great. Let's rally. Let's get Phil above 500 members. Let's rally, guys. The last month expire, and we're in other words, let's give me monies. Back below 500 again. So it is what it is. It's like been like this the last week, okay? I want to say thank you to those who have become a member or get the memberships to the channel in the last week. Your help is very much appreciated. Now, Today, with Mortal Kombat 1 all day long, we're likely going to have more eyes on the stream than usual. People are going to want to see me play this new fighting game. <clears throat> Today would be a great day to support the streams either by becoming a member or gifting memberships to the community, which people very much appreciate, okay? What do you get if you're a member? Well, access to all of my emotes. Oh, I, Siler, since you're here, I had a question for you, man. Are you getting that, like, massive pay raise that they're giving all the UPS employees or, like, drivers or whatever? The $172,000 a year if you've been there for more than uh, four years? Of which I have a ridiculous amount. Um, 
a chat crown badge to show how uh, well link the video you want me to like watch because i didn't see like the actual time. link for it uh you don't have to abide by the slow mo rules of the chat you can talk as much as you want you get a highlighted comment if you actually talk uh on link demand, the uh, on dmc comment, video. video um you get priority for special events for example in one week's time is my 15th anniversary marathon celebration and if you remember you get priority to nominate moments that we'll watch back and react to on that event and that always happens moving forward. You know, we're going to have a lot of themed events. For the I thought he was going to quit at some point. I didn't know if he did or not. The year like Halloween and Christmas and members always get priority for those. Uh, you know, right now we're in a situation where I don't know what the future hold. And many other things as well. So please consider becoming a member. And if you're someone who supports my content and like, oh, I'd really like to see, uh, you know, the community grow and, and prosper. Consider gifting some memberships. All right. That's a great way to give back. And to, to everyone, you know, for being here and just chilling and having a great vibe and atmosphere. I'm grateful for everyone who comes by my streams every day. And I love the fact that there's an opportunity to have the whole community get something out of it. You know, it's really nice. So please consider it. And thanks in advance to anyone who supports my streams today in any way. But community gifting is a great way to do it. Of course, you can always tip me. And tipping is a great way to help out as well. That's a direct contribution through PayPal. I get it right away. It actually helps a lot. DSP little. not wearing video game t-shirts all the time is a huge improvement, I must say. A little bit more than other contribution methods because I get more of a cut of that. which is It nice. makes him look less like a fucking man-child. Nice, but all contribute the message are all greatly appreciated. Thank you in advance to anyone who supports my streams today. Sound good? DSPN, also known... As DSP's gaming news segment, uh, which I would be nice to maybe get some music or sound effect or something for the transition. Right now, I got nothing, but we'll see. Anyway, um, you shut the fuck! Don't you fucking tell to me to my face today. to shut the Very fuck up! Very little amount of, of stuff going on. First of all, this one is not gaming news, but I found it so hilarious that I wanted to bring it up today. Yesterday, in all of his <laughs> intelligent wisdom, Elon Musk posted up a tweet publicly on his account stating that he didn't feel that the block feature on Twitter slash X app, whatever you want to call it now, had any kind of meaning or use. I'm salivating at the goddamn mouth. That it was a very dumb feature to block people on, on Twitter or X. You shut the fuck Don't you fucking tell me to my face to shut the fuck up. To which, the moment he posted that up, hundreds of thousands of people freaked out. They immediately started posting up, I'm gone. If the day I can't block people on this app, I'm out of here. Dude, people have been saying they're going to leave Twitter for the past year. Who the fuck cares? They're still there complaining about it. With all the online harassment, the scams, the bots, all kinds of crap that happens on the internet. Now, you expect me to use your social media app and have to put up with all that with no way to avoid any of that kind of bad activity? There's absolutely no way I would use it. I'll just leave. Yeah, that's review Fools. tech, man. That's him. You shut the fuck! Don't you fucking tell me to my face to shut the fuck up! Wrong! From like, three days ago? Incorrect! Negative! No! Nay! Absolutely not! Fuck that, Phil! You are a dirty, rotten liar! Alright? So first of all, there was a big public outcry backlash saying this guy's out of his mind. How does he not understand what a block feature could possibly do? Then the memesters started coming out and saying things such as, well, the reason that we think that, that Elon Musk is saying this is because everyone blocked him. Because he's, he tweets the dumbest shit, and no one wants to see it, but it keeps getting recommended. I can attest to this. My feed, for some reason, keeps getting a ton of Elon Musk tweets. I, why? Because I interacted with the guy once. Like, once I responded to one of his tweets. So why on earth is he the top of my feed every day? He's literally changed the algorithm of the site, so he's at the forefront, so everyone reads his goddamn tweets. But people got tired of it and blocked his ass, so they don't have to put up with it. And I think he's pissed about it. Like, oh, everyone blocks me and I own the site. Well, watch this. I'll just remove the block feature. Now you got to read my tweets, right? So basically, a lot of people think he's just an egomaniac. And this is why he's going to do it. But the best part about the whole situation is that it only lasted about two hours. Uh, I saw that with the tenants hourly, they get around that due to sending people home with less seniority without work. Shit. I'm only four years driving versus the 13 to 20. It's a loop. A whole, I'm going to Texas soon at an oil rig. Oh, okay. Gotcha, man. Yeah, you can make good money on oil rigs. It's a really fucking tough job, but it pays very fucking well. 
Because after two hours. Plus, she'll be in Texas, so you won't have income tax. So that's nice. His own team of employees who will do those community correction posts under actually did a community correction post on him stating Elon Musk has no power to remove the block feature from from X because if he does this app is no longer valid to be listed either on the iOS or the Google Play stores they have terms of service that require social media apps have a way to block people who harass you Shadow Band Gang with the two, that mustache makes DSP's face even more punchable. I mean, it forms the perfect rectangular target that you should uh, aim for. So, yeah, you're right. So if it doesn't have a block feature, they literally can't be used ever again. The whole app would be shut down and no one would be able to use it. His own employees corrected his stupidity. You know, put a fucking brain in your head between your two ears and stop just repeating and parroting what dumb shits say. To try to sit, make things sound bad. Made him look like the dumbest asshole on the planet, which he was. I mean, you are a billionaire. You're the richest dude on the planet. Do you think maybe you should think for five seconds before you post something stupid on your own? Nah, why does it matter? It's not like he's going to fucking lose sleep over it. Fucking app before you look like a jackass to the world. He thinks he's like immune is what it is because he's so rich. You know, I can do whatever I want. The sound clips are way too loud. What, like this one? You shut the fuck Don't you fucking tell me to my face to shut the fuck up. Or this one. If my kids grow up to be gay, I'm beating the shit out of them. <laughs> Look here. There, there's two choices in life. Wings. You pretend you're straight or I beat you to death. <laughs> Bruh. I can spread misinformation. It doesn't matter because I'm Mr. Fucking rich, Richest in the World. He's a moron. He really is. It's sad. This guy's in charge of multi-billion dollar companies. He's got the you know the lives of... Churchill with a five rich sat in his room ripping ass for hours during his live streams huffing his own farts so much he became the L he is now. Sad. Yep, I got you, man. You shut the fuck Don't you fucking tell me to my face to shut the fuck up. Jesus fucking Christ. Shut up. Shut the fuck up, you fucking virgin losers. God damn. Go get a life. Go outside. Ha find meaning in your fucking life. Because they're angry and can't get pussy. So I have to do it to shut them the fuck up. Jesus fucking Christ. Fuck all of you. Shut the fuck up. God You damn fucking it. cuck. I know that's one of your favorite words, you right-wing asshole. Say, come on, cuck. Ask real fucking questions, cuck. And don't be a fucking pussy, because you're a bigoted asshole, too. Fuck Thank you. I'm just gonna say it, since you're talking shit about me with your big fucking ugly mouth. You're all hateful, fucking racist bigots. Fuck you, and fuck your fucking podcast. Dare I say it, hateful cunt. Diabetes. Thousands of people in his hands. And he just acts on a whim without thinking, without any kind of, you know... Rational thought, just say whatever I want. He's a fucking idiot. And this is the kind of... Why would you put your faith in a guy like that? Why would you ever want to invest in a company he, he fucking runs? Why would you want to buy a car he makes when he's an idiot? Okay, it's not true. No one believes you. That You're an idiot, that. and it doesn't work. You know, it's funny because someone said, what's the key to success, right? <laughs> it's like, what's the missing piece to a complete and successful life? Is it intelligence? Is it skill is it experience or is it oh that billion dollars my parents gave me oh yeah that's right oh, oh, oh listen to that shit okay single or fucking only child phil whose parents gave him everything oh my god timothy marco with the five rich set today on stream that those meltdowns were partly caused by the life hardship he's going through and yeah that's the thing man you know sure you can say that but on the other hand he gets fucking ass blasted whenever somebody brings that up as a reason for why he's having like that i don't know all i can say is nobody gives a fuck what's going on in your real life on the internet like rich has blasted dsp for all the shit he's done, saying, Phil, nobody gives a fuck what's going on in your personal life. Nobody comes to your fucking streams to hear about all your fucking problems. You know, blah, blah, blah. So, yeah. 
I don't see that as an excuse whatsoever. And I silent with the five, one hour, four minutes. If we can't, yeah, we can watch it. I got it, man. Let me see. Yeah, so we can watch that 20 minutes you talked about. No worries. Uh, UPS pay is guaranteed over seniority, a 100%. It's a long scotcha. I don't know, dude. That 172 sounds pretty fucking crazy, so it makes sense that it'd be almost like too good to be true. And 04 Alphatron with the two. Oh, where is it? Shit. Diabetes. 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 Bro, I need to, like, I need to set that to loop. Because I have it on, like, start and stop. Um, where is it? Over here. Diabetes. So we want that for play and overlap. So now I can go. Diabetes. 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 There we go. And then also for this one. I want that to be. You shut the fuck up! 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 You that's probably his long-term plan is hold out until his parents die. He gets the fucking inheritance and can pay off his debt and then, you know, live happily ever after. Anyway, um, it was one of the most hilarious moments I've experienced on Twitter slash X. That's the only way DSP could ever be financially free at this point. Like... That's just the reality, and it's actually pretty fucking sad, man. Since Elon Musk bought it, he literally made him look like the dumbest person on the planet on his own fucking business, so. I'm nervous, because I don't, again, I don't know what I owe. They're not telling me. So I have a message here from Game Tracker, all right? So everyone, please listen up. For those who don't know, Game Tracker has been literally consistently supporting Street Fighter 6 since the day the game came out. He's one of the biggest whales that Phil has had recently. Every single Street Fighter 6 stream I have played, he has supported. He tipped every time. Crazy. He didn't miss a single one. Right? Now, early on in the life cycle of Street Fighter 6, you know, June and July, he was giving me all kinds of gameplay tips. He's the one who explained to me how various gameplay mechanics actually worked, which I didn't understand. He's the one that, as I was getting better with certain characters, he would explain various little nuances of the character and ways to improve and things like that. All right? So he's been a critical part of these streams of Street Fighter VI. He's been a, a critical supporter and component of me playing the game as much as I did. In addition, for those who don't know, he's always been a supporter of my streams. I mean, I remember last year, was it, or the year before, I was playing Hades, and he showed up for every Hades stream and supported and was giving me tips and that. So he's been around for a while as a very positive part of the community. Okay? So, here's an announcement, all right? This is, I'm going to read it word for word so you guys get it right from him, not from me trying to translate, but I'm actually going to read his messages word from word this morning. Okay, so here we go. Hey, everyone. I have some bitter sweet things to say today. I've already sent Phil an email about this, so he knew that this was coming. I've been considering this for a couple of weeks when it would be the best time to step away from my engagement with Phil's streams, and I eventually settled on today. Basically, my life this year has not gone the way that I wanted it to. It's not a problem with money or trolls. It has to do with my responsibilities. My work has just become more and more busy. Plus, I've been needing to give support to an increasing number of people in my life, on top of my own health not being at its best at this very moment. As a result, I've ended up with very little time to watch Phil's content at all, and I'm seeing the signs that I need to commit to a shift in focus. Okay? That was part one. Now we're going to read part two. So, again, it seems to me, like, no matter... Damned if you do, damned if you don't, right? So, I need to raise money 
in order to save my ass from these state taxes out of nowhere that came up out of nowhere. I've already made arrangements to pass the torch of counting Phil's fighting game wins and losses to a different fan of his who prefers not to be named. As for my tips, well, you know, there may be times in the future when I'll have something to say, and I'd like to see Phil respond on his podcast, for instance, but it's true. Generally, you will not be seeing me anymore, at least for the time being. I Oh, no. Greatly enjoy contributing to these streams with my tips and, and tips, meaning financial and tips about the game as well. But nothing in life lasts forever. But mostly the financial tips, right? And I've been reminded of this a lot recently. That said, I've always been a fan of Phil's, and I still hope that someday my life will calm down and I can come back reliably and chill with all of you. And I know that at whatever time that does eventually happen, he'll still be here making content. So there you go. So rather than just disappearing, which, by the way, I, I will say this. That was nice of Game Checker. Uh, let's see. I sell her with the 10. You reach 38 an hour after four years. Overtime is 30 or 61 an hour. If there's work to be done, the guy that has even a year over, you will get all of those. Ah, okay, got it. Got it. It makes sense. So there's, like, very little overtime potential. And whoever, you know, has been there the longest gets first dibs on it, and most people will take it because it's so high. Makes sense. ...to write everyone a message because... There's been people over the years who supported me, and they moved on, and that's perfectly fine. That happens to everyone, right? But in a case like Game Checker, where he's been here consistently for every Street Fighter stream, he's had so many things to add. He's had tips and things for me to learn the game. You know, people might say, well, whatever happened to him, right? Is he all right? Is he alive? Did he move on? What happened? In this case, he opted to actually write a personal message to everyone so that everyone knows what's going on with them, right? And the thing is, something like this happens literally every day. Literally, every single day, this kind of thing happens, where people say, I can't do it anymore, whether it's, I, I can't watch the streams anymore, uh, you know. For me, I'll be honest, when I was younger, I used to be a humongous fan of the Angry Video Game Nerd and the Nostalgia Critic, okay? And then, basically, when I got to a point in my life where it was like, well, I'm making my own content now. <laughs> and the reason that I read that to you guys is because I want, I'm too busy <laughs> to be watching their content constantly. And I used to be a big proponent and supporter and, you know, not, you know, you know what? It's time to, to move on. And I did, you know, and that's fine. That was my personal thing because I just didn't have time to watch. I wanted to make my own content for YouTube. And Poor I didn't guy. have no time to watch all of theirs anymore, nor did I want to because I, I was yes, afraid if I watched too much cried. Of content, it would influence mine. You see? So I get it. Things in life change. I sell her the five you get, except for holidays. That's when we make the most money, 14 hours a day. After Thanksgiving, the start of COVID, we were making bank. Yeah, that's fucking nice, man. Yeah, it's kind of weird because my company just restructured the fucking uh, pay or whatever. So I actually qualify for overtime again, which is kind of nice. Unfortunately, the project I'm on, there's very little potential for overtime. But yeah, I don't know, man. If I could work, I guess, 14 hours a day and get paid extra, I would take as many of those days as humanly possible because overtime pay feels absolutely fucking wonderful change priority shuffle, shuffle around and i'm happy to have entertained the game tracker for like i remember when i was on those like trips that i had to do when i had my first project and we were working like 12 hour days or 14 hour days and things like that like i was making a little over 50 dollars an hour basically so my overtime pay was like almost 80 bucks and literally I was like, they were like, oh, you can go to bed if you want and work on it in the morning. I'm like, no, nah, that's okay. I'll just keep working on it. And like other people had stuff to do and they're like, damn, I need to finish this up. It's like, oh, I'll take over. No worries. I don't mind staying up. So I like just loaded up with like 14 hour days as much as possible. And that shit was fucking awesome. So I got you, man. That makes sense. Overtime pay is absolutely wonderful. 
Scotty man with a two gay wings clip. Got you, man. If my kids grow up to be gay, I'm beating the shit out of them. But look here. There, there's two choices in life. Wings. You pretend you're straight or I beat you to death. I did. I'm happy that he liked the content so much that he supported it in such a way that allowed me to play Street Fighter 6 as much as I did. Can I be honest? Yeah, him coming by every single Street Fighter 6 stream and tipping allowed me to play it as much as I did. All right, without his support, maybe I wouldn't have been able to commit as much time or as much effort as I did. And by the way... Yeah, dude, it would be a real shame if you had to commit time to one video game instead of another video game. How fucking horrible. Uh, was this the same trip where they bitched about you checking in? Yeah, like, my manager got fucking pissed off that I was, like, working overtime. And it's like, well, don't send me on a fucking trip where we work overtime. <laughs> Not just financially, know. but his tips about the Yeah, game. but she got pissed off at me for working overtime without asking. And it's like... And then, then she got mad at me for working overtime, too. Because, like, this guy I worked with fucked up the like code that did the final analysis of like the warehouse utilization or whatever. And I caught the error the day before we were turning in the final fucking results to the client. And basically I had to stay up with my team lead until like fucking 10 working on a solution to actually make it fucking work. So we would have something to present to them in the morning and she got fucking mad at me, like the manager, not my team lead. My uh, manager got pissed at me for fucking putting in overtime on my timesheet. <laughs> she goes, you should have asked to work overtime. You don't just get to work it because you have stuff to do. And I'm like, you do realize that if I hadn't worked that overtime, you all would not have had something to hand into the client when the fucking deliverable was due and you would have looked like a fucking idiot. And I said... I didn't say it like that, but I just said, well, next time if I find something that's critically wrong with the project, I just won't speak up. So that way I won't have to work overtime. And it's like this was a multi-million dollar like fucking contract or some shit. Like the fucking extra 300 bucks or whatever it was that I worked overtime is not even like a fucking decimal point in the overall contract value. So it's like so fucking retarded, man. It's like, yeah, y'all could have potentially lost multi-million dollars worth of fucking future business agreements. And you're pissed off that I worked an extra like four or five hours and cost you like 300 bucks. Okay. I shortly left that project, man. It actually taught me a lot about the basics when I was trying to learn them back in June. And it was a huge hell trying to get on my feet and, and hit the ground running in this game rather than just kind of starting over. Keep in mind, I hadn't played competitive fighting games at a serious capacity for over a decade. And trying to jump into it, you know, being that far behind was a daunting task, but I did it. And now here I am. I have a Master Blanca. I'm trying to get two characters to master on the other console now. I'm doing really well in the game. People are enjoying my ongoing content of it. And, uh, you know, in a major part, that's from people like Game Tracker supporting. All right? So... Thank you, Game Tracker number one, for all of the support over the last several months, the years before that, because I knew you were always around supporting other games as well. You know, things change, and uh, I get it. You know, no, I'm not going to be upset. I mean, my God. Uh, you know, it's a complete, completely the opposite. No, I basically told them, because, like, I was doing so much shit on that project, and they would not promote me on it. They kept bringing in people who were, like, higher ranked than me. Like, at one point, we had more managers than actual people working. And it was just getting obnoxious. And so I, like, went to, like, the main project manager or whatever. And I just said, like, hey, you know, I'm training everybody that's coming in to be my boss. I know this stuff better than everyone else on the project. Either y'all need to pay me more to do this stuff because I know I can make more doing this somewhere else. I didn't even come to this company to do fucking coding because, you know, 
that's not what I want to do. It's like, so either you can pay me more or I'm going to have to find a different project where I don't have to code all day. And he goes like, oh, I'll check in, get back to you. Like a month goes by, I don't hear anything. So then I just give him like my fucking uh, roll off notice or whatever, which basically says like, hey, I've been on this project for X amount of months. I'm leaving. And there's not anything they can do about it. So then all of a sudden he like says, hey, can you hop in a call? And I'm like, sure. And he goes like, hey, man, why do you want to leave? And I'm like, well, I talked to you a month ago. You said you'd get back to me about potentially getting more money. And I didn't hear anything. So I just took that as a no. <laughs> he like, it was funny as shit, man. I don't know. But yeah, I wasn't getting paid to be like a coder. That's the thing that's crazy is like, if you go to like a company specifically with like a technology background or coding background or whatever, you get paid way more than if you go in as like a business kind of role. I was in a business role doing a technology job. So it's like I was making way less than I could have. And it's like, well, shit, if I'm going to do this stuff and get paid less, why the fuck am I doing it? So, yeah, I just switched to a project where I don't have to fucking do anything that's difficult now. So, easy clap. Really dumb. I'm just happy and grateful, right? That people like this come by and chill and support when they can. And if th things change in time, you know, you move on, that's good as well, right? Thank you for leaving. By the way, thanks for leaving on such nice positive terms. It was really nice to have written the community a message like that so everyone knows what's going on. And obviously, I wish you all the best. And uh, basically, the way I see it is, you know, if you can ever come back, you're, you're more than welcome. But Give me money. I get it. And if life, if, if you know, sadly, if... Uh, you move on and this is it. Well, thanks. Thanks for the memories and thanks for chilling on all the awesome streams you were on. Thanks for the money, stupid fuck. And uh, thanks for being a great positive influence here on DSP Gaming and on DSP Reacts as well. Wish you the best, man. All right? Now, the reason that I read those messages the way I did is because he also tipped, but I wanted to read the messages first so we could all enjoy the impact of the messages before idiots started going crazy because he tipped me $150 with those messages. Okay? So rather than people, oh, he chipped, oh, where's the hat, where's the vest, oh, <laughs> where's the glasses, the glasses, Phil. Instead, I wanted to fucking read the messages and let's talk about them and let them sink in first before we start freaking out about a contribution like some people do, okay? Oh, where's the glasses, the glasses, Phil. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck was, hold on. Where's the glasses? The glasses, Phil. <laughs> the glasses, Phil. <laughs> the glasses, Phil. <laughs> <laughs> Not a kid's content creator, though, guys. Not a kid's content creator. Oh my god. All right. So, copy. If my kids grow up to be gay, I'm beating the shit out of them. But look here, there, there's two choices in life. Wings. You pretend you're straight, or I beat you to death. Yeah, we can go ahead uh, and watch the trailer, actually. Let me just go ahead and do it. And then I'll have to think about it. There you go. This one, right? New from Team Kanoe.
Dude, God of War is a fucking shame what they did to it. The fear I feel when the noise starts dying down. Is it true that there's a place for you when the sun burns out? Don't you fear that it's too late to turn the tide? These machines will never build to make things right. If my kids grow up to be gay, I'm beating the shit out of them. But look here, there, there's two choices in life. Wings. You pretend you're straight, or I beat you to death. I don't know why they don't make like a Bionicle game. Is this shit official or is it like fake? Presents first look. A fan made game. Um, so they have the license for this shit? Because they have a Steam page. Trademark a Lego group, which mm, this is a non profit game made by fans. Interesting. I wonder if it's gonna get struck down or not. I don't know why Lego doesn't fucking make it. Like it seems like a no brainer. Just drop the characters into the existing Lego game format and I feel like it'd be pretty easy. I wonder why they don't do that. They should just like literally contact these people and be like, oh, here, here's a little bit of money. You can use the licensing and give us 30% of sales. I think he has enough red orbs, guys. Do you think he has enough red fucking orbs? I don't think so.
Devil May Cry music doesn't like bother me like Doom music does. It's a little more manageable, I feel like. It's not like that really riff heavy guitar music, so I I don't mind it as much. King Samuel with the five. Uh, Lego tried rebooting Bionicle in 2015. Unfortunately, it bombed because of the lack of marketing, and it got the Disney treatment. Basically, ri uh, okay. So they made it gay, or not gay, but like super fucking bitch made. <laughs> like they basically took all the appeal and just shat on it. Smoking sexy style, dude. Yeah, they have like all the Devil May Cry music within like the tower mode. I saw that with the five, this guy is a monster. I saw a video how he uses his controller. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. The other thing that's crazy too to think about is programming all this shit. Like, if you're gonna make a game like this, you basically have to be this good at it in order to account for all the shit people could possibly do while playing it. Which is another interesting thing about this. It's like, the game devs themselves have to be like this fucking crazy good at it to make sure it's even feasible in the first place. That's what's kind of wild. Yeah, doesn't Lego, like, pretty much basically just make, like, Star Wars, Harry Potter, and that type of shit now? Like, they don't really do anything. They just mainly do, like, licenses and things of that nature. Yeah, but they mainly just use, like, other IPs. They don't really build anything anymore. They just have, like, their generic sets for, like, the fucking, uh... Whatever that shit's called. Lego City or whatever the fuck. And then they just do a bunch of license crap now, right?
sold my MTG cards, but won't get a price until next week. Nice, man. Hope it goes well. Yeah, because of the licensing nature of LEGO sets, like, you can make a lot of money from them if you just hold on to them for long enough. There's, like, a whole fucking sub-market of people who do that. They just mass buy, like, the Star Wars LEGO sets, sit on them for 10 years, and they go up in value dramatically because they're out of print. You have a D.Va minifig? Is that a real thing? Damn, bro, that thing's worth 40 bucks. What the hell? Should I buy it, guys? I get my first official Lego collectible. Yo, I'm surprised there's not like a, a Lego minifig grading company. I, um, that's probably a thing. I don't know. Oh, let's see, Lego minifig. Either, either, either subscribe, donate, or get the fuck out. Somebody's got to grade them. Grading minifigs. Dude, it's not really a thing. What the fuck? Damn, man. I don't see anywhere you can grade them. Griffin XC with the 30 months at tier two. Just finished military service. I enlisted at a military college and received 4.5K while studying only. Life is good. What's up, chat? Nice, man. That's pretty cool. You got paid to fucking study, so big ups, man. Uh, I saw where the five I watched this so many times. How do you do this without damage? He's probably been playing DMC since he was a kid, like back in the PS2 era. So just ungodly amount of time practicing, probably. 
But I think he takes a little bit of damage here and there, but it's basically like he has abilities that heal him a little bit. Dude, I fucking suck at Devil May Cry 5. I would look like a complete fucking amateur. I have zero fucking ability to chain combos, bro. I am trash compared to this. I'm <laughs> like, absolute garbage, bro. Y'all could point and laugh, but... I wouldn't expect anything close to this fucking skill level. Well, the thing is, is like Final Fantasy abilities, all you have to do is like press one button and like you use the ability. In fucking DMC, you got to chain combos to use the abilities. You know, so Final Fantasy 16 greatly simplifies it. I saw that with the two you hopping off after this? Uh, probably. And Shadow Band Gang with the two sounds like something we would pay to see. Or pay not to see, man, because that shit would be fucking or Like, I'm telling you, I'd be trash at that game. I mean, I've already beaten it, so I know I'm not good at it. It'd be pretty uh pitiful to watch, but I don't know. I wouldn't mind, but just don't expect any like level of like decent gameplay. Like, let's see how much time did I even put in the Devil May Cry Five? I barely. I don't I think I only played it once, because this is back when I was still grinding YouTube shit. Yeah. So yeah, I played through it one time, so I finished it. But yeah.
Does this game have long cutscenes to watch? Eh, occasionally. I would have to get a PlayStation controller because even when I played this game on PC originally, I used a PS4 controller. Like, Devil May Cry is one of those games because I originally played it on PS2. I have to use a PlayStation controller on. I don't know. It's like one of those psychological things. If I play, try to play it with an Xbox controller, it feels wrong. But I wouldn't be like opposed to playing it on stream. I just would say greatly temper your expectations in terms of the quality of that stream because bruh. Uh, I saw it with a five. Yeah, we can check it out, man. Wait, just one minute? Okay. So just like the first uh, one minute and 50 seconds. Gotcha. King Samuel, I bet you love the uh, Lego Pride set. I bet that's your favorite Lego product. Dude, I bought, so I was like going through some random shit I own and I found like this black paint. It just reminded me of that because of like the uh, solid color Lego figures. Like I bought this paint a long ass time ago and it's called like, I forget what the term is, but it's like basically as black as black can be. And literally when you paint a 3D object with enough of it to where it's like completely like solid colored, whatever you're looking at no longer looks three-dimensional it literally looks like a shadow of whatever it is it just it starts to look like an outline no matter what angle you look at it from and i never tested it out man like i literally bought some to try it and i never got around to it and that just reminded me of that shit so i need to do something with it i'm trying to think of what i should paint black because that shit sounds really fucking cool
Yeah, Vanta Black, but it's called Black 3.0. Uh, I sell it with the two. Continue if you want. Yeah, we can. I'll go to the five minute mark and I want to show you all this paint, bro. This is cool. What's the story of Devil May Cry anyway? Um, basically, Dante and Virgil are the sons of an angel and a demon, and therefore they have the power of heaven and hell, and typically they fight forces aligned with either side of that. And then Dante and Virgil also have their own kind of conflict for power and control. Uh, it's... There's not really anything super important in the plot, but that's kind of the main premise. Is Dante and Virgil are like half angel, half demon, and they don't really get along. <laughs> Yeah, I like the reboot personally. I thought it was good. I don't think like I mean the story wasn't the best, but it's a Devil May Cry game. My favorite's probably five. I mean, I feel like that's the best one. Just because of all the fucking variety of combat and everything. But here, look at this shit real quick. This shit's really fucking crazy, man. Like, watch this. Let me see if there's like a short. Um... Like, look at that shit, man. It takes away all the fucking detail. It's pretty fucking wild, man. I wanted to see if somebody had, like, an actual, like, example of it. Maybe this is... Hey, everyone. Today, I'm going to be showing you the new world Don't Become a Ninja by your eyes. Okay, here we go. Here Bro, we look at that shit. Black. That shit doesn't even look real. Look how it just disappears. <laughs> you can't even tell what I'm holding. You can't see any contours of it whatsoever. So cool. That is so cool. <laughs> Look at this from all angles here. That is the coolest thing I've ever seen. But how fucking sick would it be to, like, just paint random fucking objects with, like, this paint? Like, I feel like that'd be so fucking awesome. I'm just trying to think of, like, what I should paint with it. Because I have, like, ten, I, 
I think I have like 10 bottles or something stupid. Like I bought a fuck ton of it thinking like, oh, dude, I'm going to paint all this shit and like make a bunch of cool little display pieces. Because I heard like the secret is to get it to actually work well is you have to put on like five layers of it. So it's not like, oh, paint it on once and then it works perfectly. You got to put a lot of layers on. Well, dude, nobody can see my cock anyway, so, you know, it doesn't matter. I don't need to paint it. Scene. Okay, this is my favorite thing I've ever painted. This is so cool. Bruh. Black 2.0. It actually compares pretty well to Singularity. So Singularity, I showed in a... It actually compares pretty well to Rush. Now this is pretty amazing to me. This is much blacker than Black 2.0. It actually compares pretty well to Singularity. So Singularity, I showed in a... With my eyes looking at this, I don't know if you can tell on camera, but I actually can't tell a difference between the Muso Black and the Singularity here. I can't See? afford this! Now let's just use the Muso Black to paint over this and see how dark we can actually get it in the box. And then we're gonna put a light bulb inside and see what happens. What will it look like on the walls in there? Small hole. This is so weird. It looks like I'm shining this outside and that's the moon in the sky or something. It's completely black. It's reminiscent of the night sky outside and that's the moon. In okay, so I have my flashlight on and I'm going to be putting it in the box and looking what it looks like through a small hole. This is so weird. It looks like I'm shining this. Yeah, dude, that is weird. The sky or something. It's completely black. It's reminiscent of the night sky. You can't see any contours of the box. Whatsoever. Bro, that's fucking creepy. So cool. <laughs> okay, the camera is inside there with the light bulb. It looks like the moon out a window or something. That's weird, man. That is so weird. Hey everyone, thanks for watching another episode. But yeah, I feel like it'd be really sick to just like paint something with this stuff. Every year, there's a new black, even of all life that hits it. So why not just make a fun video comparing? You know what? Let's just add the rest of them. Aleo Air Black, Army Painter Black, Muso Black, and this is the craziest thing ever. What? Lucas, come check. I can seriously, I can't see any details. I have to look at it from like two centimeters distance. It's completely black. Looks like the silhouette. Yeah, you have to look at it from like three inches. Then you final miniature and spray that with Muso Black. It works to use it on miniatures. But first, you know what? Let me thank this week's sponsor. Titan Bro, Central ain't nobody Department, care about this week's sponsor. Yakuza, awesome company that... Let's Dude, that's creepy. Look at that shit. <laughs> Bro, that is weird. You actually this have to, like, really to look. What we got so far. Citadel Chaos Black. Ammo MiG One Shot Black. Montana Black Black. Army Painter Black Spray Primer. Citadel Abaddon Black, Army Painter Black, Vallejo Air Black, Vallejo Model Color Black, Muso Black, and Muso Black with varnish. So now that we spray them all, my first initial impression was black can change quite a lot depending on which light you use here as compared to the others. And our first impression with this color really lasted. If you're looking at the miniatures in a soft light or non-directional light, like a room light or similar, it really looks Bro, that is weird. Pitch black. It looks like a black hole. If I have it from one meter's distance and... Why did I buy it? Because I saw videos like this and I was like, bro, that shit looks fucking awesome. I don't have a light sword. Dude, maybe I should buy like an old shitty 360 controller that's just like junk. And then paint the 360 controller and see what it looks like. That's five centimeters away from it. 
I don't see any detail. It like it just vanishes. And even when I'm looking at it really, really close, I just see the finest details, like a raised edge or the top of the nose or something like that. It really is black. But what is darkness? Well, a simple definition would be the absence of Dog, light. Dog, why do they not use can it? Have a darkness or is a TV editor? the fuck is the point of a video like that oh my gosh i am so excited here. who is the blackest okay so i'm just basically at this point going through the motions because we've got two coats of the 3.0 on here in this thing now it compares to the musu it is actually really cool One's not dry. What the fuck? Yeah, this is the one I have. The black 3.0, dude. Really black. Uh, I'm really pleased with that. That's a nice finish. It's, it's a good paint. Okay, so coat number four is dry. It's cracking or something. I don't know. It's a good paint. On the right, you've got mood two. Yeah, the black 3.0 looks better than that other one. And aside from the fact that it melted the ball, because... Maybe I did it wrong, I didn't airbrush it, maybe it's not supposed to be used on that type of plastic like a ping pong ball. The blackness to me, and I don't know if it's coming out of the camera, is more or less the same, I'd say. If anything, it's the tiniest... That's like so trippy to look at, though. So, I might have done the wrong thing by putting it on a plastic ping pong. Yeah, you can still kind of see some of the details on this one, but you literally can't see anything on that. I don't know, man. The shit's pretty cool, though. Uh, I sell it with the five. It's only three minutes long. All right, we can watch it real quick. Then I'm probably going to hop off. But yeah, I need to figure out something to paint with it, man. I feel like that shit would be really cool. I'm key, you're already black enough, man. Chill out. What would be the point of painting a Pokemon card? It's already flat. You need to paint something three-dimensional. And Shadow Band Gang with the two, put it on Roadblock. <laughs> Bruh. Virgil's move set's really cool. Dude, I know what I should get. I know what I should do, guys. I should paint a Funko Pop. There we go. I can just buy like a fucking shitty ass Funko Pop from like Target or something and just paint it black. Let's have some fun. 
<laughs> Marvel Funko Pop. There you go. Dude, I'll get the Black Panther Funko Pop and make him even more of the Black Panther than he was before. To the point where he's literally fucking invisible in the third dimension. <laughs> no, I don't collect Funko Pops. Alright guys, I'm gonna have to hop off. It is past five and I was not planning on staying up this late. So I hope you all have a wonderful Sunday or whatever's left of it for you. And I will talk to everyone later. Have a uh, great rest of your weekend, everyone. And peace out.